edition. I can buy the paperback. Fire faces a crowded smartphone market. One retail expert says this goes back to Amazon's mission, which is to sell stuff. I'm Ed Donahue. The Presbyterian Church USA could vote at a convention this week to join the Israel divestiture movement. Correspondent Warren Levinson tells us why. The Reverend Jeffrey Dio insists the resolution before the Presbyterian Church USA General Assembly is incremental. It's divestment from just three companies that participate and profit from the harmful occupation. The Presbyterian's numbers are declining and their investments in the three companies, Caterpillar, Hewlett-Packard and Motorola, are small. But voting to divest would put the church in the midst of a hot Mideast controversy and not help anyone, says retired pastor John Wimberly. I mean, Israel's behavior is not going to change. The Palestinians' behavior is not going to change. An earlier version of the resolution failed by just two votes in 2012. I'm Warren Levinson. And that's the news for Radio VR in Washington. I'm Kate Ziggle. And I'm Rick Young. People are saying it could be a baby bump. Our senior celebrity correspondent, Tyler, is here. Tyler, you always have the inside dish. What's the deal? She looks like she got fat, so she might have a baby in her tummy. Oh, what else have you heard? I heard she has a boyfriend and they have sex. That's right. You know, the Hollywood couple vacationed in Rome together just two months ago. They had a big hotel room, and I can tell you what they did in it. Spill it, Tyler. He put his penis in her vagina. Hot. She is one lucky gal. And she's going crazy. Uh-oh. Is stardom starting to wear on Emma? Yeah. She's crazy and dumb. She put a carrot in her vagina. Whoa. Do tell. Yeah. She said, oh, this carrot's like my boyfriend's penis. I'm going to rub it all over my vagina. I'm so gross. Then she ate it like Bugs Bunny. What a hot mess. Hey, Emma, get it together, girl. Tyler, you are breaking news as always. This is the Onion News Network. Might not be loud enough. Okay. This is Free Talk Live. You can call in, take control of the airwaves, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. That is the Pro XPN toll-free call-in line. And Mark and Ian are still out of town. They'll be back late tonight in studio tonight. It's Daryl. And Alan. And, yeah, let me turn you up just a Hair there, Miss Ellen. Okay, thanks. Is this better? Do yes. I sound normal level? Okay. Yeah, so we, we've got some interesting stories tonight. Uh, Ellen, you brought one in to where the IRS lost a bunch of emails because a computer crashed or right. something. And that just that doesn't even sound plausible to me. Like, I'm not a computer guy, but I know enough to know that emails get stored on a server, not on an individual computer. So if my computer crashes, all of my emails haven't gone away. Right. Well, I mean, they're not paid to be competent. They're just paid to do their job, which apparently they can't do because they don't have backup servers. So... I have this story from foxnews.com, and I know it's Fox or Mox News, as some people call it, but um, well, Mox it's News still... is a different website. Mox News is a website that makes fun of Fox and MSNBC and CNN and all of the right. Others. It's it's meant to be satire for this this Fox News, which I know some people don't trust, but I've seen this on like several other uh, news stations, so feel like this is, you know, a pretty well documented story. And uh, the title of this article is called Why Are Why the IRS Scandal Won't Die by Chris Steyerwalt. I hope I said that right. Steyerwalt. Okay. IRS Commissioner John Kassinen is on the Hill today for another round of contentious hearings on mounting allegations of misconduct at the agency, taking center stage the vanished emails of key figures in the scandal. The agency, accused of harassing conservative groups, claims that emails from individuals who are the focus of congressional investigations are gone and unrecoverable. A dubious claim, quite dubious, I would say, 
As the partisans haggle over recycled hard drives in the existence of backup servers, though let's not forget why we care. This isn't just an ordinary story about an overpowerful government agency run amok. These allegations are here of political corruption in which officials appointed by the party in power allegedly sought to impede and punish those of the opposing view with the intent to alter the outcome of two elections. Okay, so hold on. I, I just want to sort of play devil's advocate here for a second. The IRS is being accused of having targeted certain political groups conservative groups I, didn't i hear that it was the tea party that they were targeting that yeah and looking i i've seen the list of the groups and you know some of them might be what they claim to be conservative basically it was republican groups right I, so I any group that was really call any republican a conservative well maybe it was conservative to them it was just an opposing group that they had to compete against and clearly this was the only way they could do it right but the the point that i wanted to make is that yes some of these groups did get harsher scrutiny on getting tax exempt statuses but they still got the tax exempt status harsher scrutinies what do you mean by were they treated like lesser parties were they like you're not important enough so we're gonna find no, you a little was, bit more it was one of these things of we want more information give us some more information but okay. they ultimately got the tax exempt statuses ultimately so, they did but now, how long did it take for that like not what, much longer than it it normally takes a couple of years anyway Right, but there must have been some sort of disparity if if this is such a scandal. Right, there was, but I, I still haven't been able to make my point. So okay, I'll, I'll just let you give go. Give me just a second. So what they're saying is we were discriminated against and you know we, we want all of these emails. Oh, well, you know what? We lost evidence that we were discriminating against people. So you know, where's where's the real problem here? Like, the problem isn't that they lost emails or that the content of the emails that were lost proved incompetence. The fact that they're claiming, oh, our computer crashed and we lost emails, that should prove their incompetence. <laughs> well, that certainly but does. Like everybody I Everybody think... that knows anything about computers knows that when a single computer crashes, you don't lose everything that was on a server that's in a completely separate location. Right. Maybe the hard drives were wiped out, and I think that's what they were talking about when they said recycled hard drives. If I wiped out the hard drive on this computer, all of my emails still exist because my emails are not on this hard drive. The emails are on a server. So even even though this does prove they're in like I don't know why they wouldn't have some sort of like backup file for this or it it just seems like it, it's too purposeful to have been an accident oh, and I think that's I think that's what the issue to is be an accident but I, I just think it's odd that people are getting up in arms of oh well you know they lost the evidence that they were you know doing more harsh scrutiny on certain groups that ultimately wound up getting the tax exempt status that they were seeking in the first place right and may, i think maybe it was just the fact that they were discriminating against them why people are upset about this not like nobody is paying attention to the fact that it's it's just so unrealistic that they would lose all of these emails on the server like yeah. besides that it's just the fact that these emails contained content that that was like supposedly proving that they were discriminating against these groups and that's what it is that they're upset about is the discrimination and the fact that the government isn't doing exactly what they thought it was going to even though every time there's a problem in society they're like government needs to be more effective and then once they become more effective by adding in all of these rules and regulations and laws and fines then they become more incompetent because it's just more paperwork they have to go through right and I also think it's kind of odd that there are some people that are trying to defend this. And, you know, this is the sort of incompetence that happens from the federal government. And there are people that want this incompetent federal government to take care and take ownership of your medical records. Okay, well, besides... Do you want the people that claim that, oh, my computer crashed, so I lost every email that I've ever sent... 
<laughs> but right. only the ones during this specific time period where there was fishy things going on. All of the email before that is still there. All of the email after that is still there. But just this one particular time period. Right. It's that's not very all believable. Gone. So, Ellen, sorry, but all of your medical records have gone away because my computer turned off. Right. Well, I just, I don't see how that's realistic. Like, that obviously was done, like, by somebody. And I I think people know that they should be upset about this because it's not only proving their incompetence in, like, the technological aspect, but also the fact that they can't even retain a sense of, like, justice when they're uh, judging other parties or, like, what they are deciding to do, like, if they're going to give the tax exemption or not. Right. So, okay, is there more to the article? Uh, There's a little bit left. Okay, go ahead and continue. That's not just the usual stuff we've read about with regulations gone wild. Consequences of an obtuse and overbroad bureaucracy that rains misery on citizens just and unjust. This is an allegation of rigging two elections by high officials in an agency with enormous powers to harass and intimidate. And I I guess that's the final point that they're making is that uh, it's like this was an act of intimidation, I think, just to crowd out other, uh, you know, sources of competition for the party that's supposedly not conservative in comparison to these ones. The party that's in power has two wings. The party that's in power is what I call the ruling party or the republicratic party. It's got two wings. It's got two factions. There's the red team and the blue team. And they want you to think that they're opposed to one another But really what it is, they're opposed to us. They're opposed to people that actually espouse the ideas of liberty. Yes, because that's a threat to them, and they'll do anything in their power to keep us down. Yeah, and if you have experience with the IRS or anything, call in 855-450-FREE. This is Free Talk Live. I want to share something important that will not only improve your life, but the lives of many others as well. And all you need to do is drink coffee. I'm not talking about harmful store-bought or chain coffee. No, this is truly the best of the best coffee. We've partnered with Kamano Island Coffee Roasters to offer BuzzBox. With every purchase, 10% goes towards our efforts to give the gift of human freedom by providing at least 100 microfinance loans via World Vision. So literally, just one cup at a time, you're having an impact and helping make a difference in the world and one sip will have you buzzing to family and friends to prove just how good it is we're giving a free pound of coffee to everyone in the audience all you do is cover shipping go to coffee.freetalklive.com buzzbox coffee is organic so it contains no pesticides or toxins it's shade grown so less acidity and no heartburn it's top one percent arabica grade and gives people the opportunity to own their own coffee farms join us in making a huge impact at coffee.freetalklive.com Making the right decisions is a challenge to investors. Are we going to see economic growth, slide into a recession, or at worst, depression? Hi, Ted Anderson from Midas Resources. We all know when a company acts irresponsibly, divesting ourselves in a move towards safety is prudent. When the market becomes volatile, U.S. Treasuries are a safe haven. But what do you do when the U.S. government overextends itself and spends beyond its means? Many investors are turning toward gold as a common-sense alternative to traditional paper investments. Midas Resources has put together a powerful book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, discussing costs, benefits, risks, featuring full-color illustrations, weights, and measures. The book is free and can be yours by calling 800-686-2237. Paper investments are dwarfed by gold's 6,000-year history. Discover how gold may be right for you and your IRA by calling 800-686-2237. Whether buying or it's time for you to sell, the book is free. Call 800-686-2237. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 70% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keene. Keene is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. From demonstrations and vigils to outreach and volunteering, there's a lot going on in Keene. 
Keen is the Liberty Media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more, all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at freekeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at freekeen.com. That's freekeen.com. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. Have you ever wanted to move to the land of Libpair, Libertarian Paradise, where there's fun for everyone that doesn't initiate force on others, fun for the kids, parties for the adults, buy and sell in silver or Bitcoin, scenic hikes and gun shoots, speeches to educate us all? The Porcupine Freedom Festival is Libpair in the White Mountains of New Hampshire for a week this summer, June 22nd to 29th. Get your tickets now before there's no more room. Porkfest, the event of a lifetime. Porkfest.com. That's P-O-R-C-F-E-S-T dot com. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You can call in, take over the airwaves, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Or we have Skype. You can Skype into the show. Skype username is lrn.fm. Of course, you will need to send a contact request first. That way we can click you know, connect, and then you can send us a message letting us know what it is that you want to talk about on the show tonight. And... We started off talking about the lost emails from the IRS, and I've got a story about some more incompetence from people in the federal government that involves computers. What a surprise. But before I get to that story, I want to make sure that I tell you about antiwar.com. Are you proud that the premier anti-war site on the internet is run by libertarians? Well, it's time to do something about it, because between some government fines levied against Antiwar.com a few years back, death of some major donors, along with those who panicked after the revelation that the FBI was monitoring Antiwar.com, they have found themselves in a tight spot. They cut the staff over the past several years in half, which has spread the remaining staff very thin. Right now, the top folks there are forgoing salaries. They are committed to keeping the website going. Are you? They need your donation. Please go to antiwar.com and donate or call them today. They do take Bitcoins. In fact, they prefer Bitcoin, the peace currency. Antiwar.com slash donate. So... Ellen, I'm sure you've heard by now that the U.S. Marshals are auctioning off some of the Bitcoins that were seized from the Silk Road. Oh, yes, I heard about this. We actually talked about this last week a little bit. I found it pretty astonishing, like the huge chunks that they're selling. Like they know that there's not that many people. Yeah, there's not many people out there that have that much money they're willing to invest in Bitcoin. That's roughly $1.8 million yeah, for that's, a chunk of Bitcoin. Pretty, pretty much a and lot of money. And anyone who wanted to or who wants to place a bid, because bidding actually winds up taking place one week from today, but people that wanted to bid, they had a designated amount of time in which they could register on the site or register somehow with the U.S. Marshals and send in a $200,000 refundable deposit to basically show that I can wind up paying for the $1.8 million worth of Bitcoin. Right, well, so it's just evidence that you can pay. They're not going to like 
swipe it away if like it's you decide you don't want to deposit. Okay, so it's not something like so if you if, lose if you don't end up paying in the end, they'll still give it back to you. No, if you wind up winning the bid, then they take that as the first two hundred thousand dollars towards your eventual payment. But if you don't win, you get your two hundred thousand dollars back. Okay, well, that's reassuring. I thought they were going to keep it. It's like, no, in order to bid, you have to at least pay this much. No, no, that's why it's a refundable deposit. Okay, so, so continue with your, your point. The Somebody over at the U.S. Marshals is fairly incompetent when it comes to computers, much like the fine, wonderful folks over at the IRS. Now, they're incompetent when it comes to computers, well, and a story here from TechCrunch says, In a magnificent show of technical ineptitude, the U.S. Marshals revealed the identities of many of the anonymous bidders in its $18 million seized Silk Road Bitcoin auction by carbon copying all of them on an email thread. When one asked a question, the response was sent to 40 of the bidders many whose names were attached or easily identifiable from the email addresses, meaning that it, and they, they've got a screenshot here, but of course it's all redacted so that you can't see the email address, but you can see where there were, you know, several email addresses. So right. when it says easily identifiable, it would be like, you know, uh, Daryl at freetalklive.com. There's only one Daryl on Free Talk Live, so it's very easy to figure out whose email address that is. Right. If you want to put the time into figuring out who these people are. And, well, some of the other email addresses, it said that the name was attached. So sometimes when you hit a, you know, hit the reply button on an email, it will come up with Ellen and then Ellen's email address. Right. So it. When they did the reply all to these people that are supposed to be anonymous bidders, all 40 people that were emailed found out the identities of their of competition. Most of the other people that were going to be bidding against them. Oh, no. Do you think they did this on purpose to make people paranoid? And like if they know the identity of the people they're bidding against, they're like, well, I got to take this person out because I want to win those Bitcoin. I don't know. But the I mean, article here continues. It says that, uh, you know, this, the fact that they did the reply all, easily identifying many of the people, negated the whole point of the auction being anonymous. These 40 bidders now know each other's identities, so someone may actually wind up leaking the identities of the bidders. And then they... Post the screenshot, which I will wind up posting to the Facebook page for Free Talk Live, which is facebook.com slash free talk live. It says, here's the email sent from the U.S. Marshals, Bitcoin Department of Justice email account to the bidders. But we're honorable at TechCrunch, so we blotted out the names. The government sees 29,656.5130652926. Last fall, when it raided the digital black market Silk Road, which was known to facilitate sell of hard drugs. And they report inaccurately on TechCrunch that the Silk Road sold weapons. The Silk Road did not sell weapons. There was another black market site on what they call the dark web that did sell weapons. That was called the Armory. And that just didn't last too long. Right. Well, I mean, I think it's it's kind of dangerous for these people's identities to be leaked because uh, the, I'm sure the Silk Road had many uh, dedicated you know, shoppers that, that went there f specifically for uh, the special services that it provided being a black market. But um, it's it's just the fact that, like, you know, these people might be upset that this money was stolen and the probably want it returned to whoever it belongs to and uh i'm not sure what the man's name was that was claimed to be uh ross albrick who yes, is the purported uh founder of the silk road 
And Ross's mom will actually be at the Porcupine Freedom Festival next week. Ooh, and gotta listen we'll to that. We'll tell you more about the Porcupine Freedom Festival when we come back. And of course, you can call in, talk about the incompetence of the U.S. Marshals, the incompetence of the IRS, or anything else that is on your mind. 855 450 free. This is Free Talk Live. From hackers and identity thieves to government spies, your online privacy has never been more at risk. Go to unseennow.com and learn how their unparalleled encryption tools can keep your communications totally secure. Unseennow.com offers email, chat, voice and video calling, and cloud storage all for free. It's never been more important to lock down your digital life, and now you can. Stop Big Brother in his tracks. Learn how at unseennow.com. Gentlemen, in search of a million-dollar smile that'll make them take notice, I mean really get their attention, then get the mud. My Magic Mud. The fluoride-free whitener with no chemicals, additives, GMOs, or bad taste. And safe to swallow. My Magic Mud detoxifies, reduces sensitivity, cleans and strengthens your teeth while it whitens. Comes as a powder for pure whitening power. Start looking good for that special someone. Get the mud now. MyMagicMud.com a meme is not easy to define. What is it? But you know it when you see it. Amazing. Don't tread on meme.com proves that. I feel so enlightened. Don't tread on meme, M E M E, helping you give the finger to our monetary system of deception by providing you with silver dime trading cards. Unlike today's dollar, they have value. And they look neat, too. Oh, would you look at those? Aren't those just swell? Don't tread on meme.com. While you're browsing their numerous silver dime card designs, take time to download the easy-to-use silver calculator app. This simple piece of technology lets you know instantly, whether using iPhone or Android, just how much your silver coin is worth. Find out all the details at don'ttreadonmeme.com. Now accepting Bitcoin. Don't tread on meme, your path to a voluntary society with honest money. Don't tread on meme.com, serving you faster than the Fed prints money. Free speech is protected on the internet, right? Not always. Government agencies try to limit free speech and commerce on the net. Luckily, when they do, the Institute for Justice is there to defend your First Amendment right to free speech. IJ helped set the first federal precedent for internet free speech in 1999 and ever since has worked to prevent unconstitutional roadblocks in cyberspace. Visit our website today at ij.org. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's post pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. DVD available now at GunsAndWeed.com or on Amazon. That's GunsAndWeed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's GunsAndWeed.com. Help get LRN.FM into more ears. Visit Promote.LRN.FM for a free bumper sticker, flyers, banners, graphics, and more. Promote.LRN.FM. This is Free Talk Live. You can call in. Take control of the airwaves. 855-450-FREE. 
That is the Pro XPN toll free call in line. Of course, you can call in, talk about whatever it is that is on your mind. We've been talking primarily about the incompetence of some within the federal government, specifically someone over at the IRS who lost uh, about two years worth of emails, claims, oh, it was because my computer crashed. And then some Einstein working for the U.S. Marshals who hit reply all instead of using the blind carbon copy to send the email. They carbon copied 40 supposedly anonymous bidders for Silk Road Bitcoin. There's still just a little bit more to that story, and we'll get to that momentarily. But since we have been talking about the Silk Road and Ellen, you mentioned Ross Ulbrich, who the is dead, purported the pilot to Roberts. be the Dread Pirate Roberts. His mother is going to be at the Porcupine Freedom Festival next week. Which I'm super excited about. We will also be at the Porcupine Freedom Festival next week. Although it is lovingly referred to as Porkfest. That's P-O-R-C-F-E-S-T. Porkfest is a large camping festival in the White Mountains of New Hampshire. Over the course of a week, there will be vendors, dances, parties, karaoke, lots of speakers, including Lynn Ulbricht, the mother of Ross Ulbricht. I'm giving a speech. Ian is giving a speech. Ellen, are you doing anything this um, year? I'm not quite sure. I mean, I may be speechifying in the media room at some point, but... Um, I'm oh, yeah, not I think scheduled ALP to have... is going to possibly be broadcasting. Possibly. Uh, this is a possibility we haven't quite considered fully, but uh, Allie and I will continue discussing this and probably have a plan set up, and we'll post that on our Facebook page at some point. Uh, if you want to check us out on Facebook, go to facebook.com slash ALP podcast. Or and... you could just come to Porkfest. Yes, or come to Porkfest. meet Fest. the lovely Ellen in person. Tickets can only be purchased at the door now or at the gate, but there is really something for everybody at Porkfest. It isn't just a great camping event for many people. It is life changing. You'll get a glimpse of what life could be like for you in the free state. Go to Porkfest.com. That's P-O-R-C-F-E-S-T dot com. You can look at the schedule and I'm not sure if you can still book a campsite or not, but go to porkfest.com, get all of the information you need about the Festival right. of Porcupines. I think that depends on how full the campground itself is. But I think one thing that's really fascinating to me about Porkfest is that you would be hard-pressed to find a better example of a fully functioning anarcho-capitalist society and like it's an entire week long and like you can see businesses just spring up out of nowhere it's it's incredible the the amount of like ingenuity and uh, benevolence that people have especially like when when you're at pork fest it's like walking around one giant like party all the time yeah and people will just walk away from their tent where they have goods that they're selling they come back and everything is still there. Right, because the people that go to Porkfest are decent and have respect for property rights. Do you yes. know if Robert Murphy is going to be speaking? Uh, Robert Murphy is doing several things. He is once again hosting karaoke. He is once again hosting some sketch comedy event. Oh, that's He's great. He's probably going to talk about... You know, buying and selling things and broken windows and macros, something and others. Right. Oh, I love Robert Murphy. I think he's hilarious and also very smart. And like I went to see one of his speeches last year and the entire uh, pavilion that it was in was completely full. Like he's I, I, there's just something about him that like makes people want to listen to him. Yeah, well, he's entertaining and he's educated and he is good in his delivery of information. And Robert Murphy respects property rights. Somebody that doesn't respect property rights is the U.S. Marshals. Yeah, that's that's quite true. They have seized 
29,000, or actually they seized a lot more than 29,656 and a half Bitcoin. They also have possession or control over 144,000 others. But Ross Ulbricht is saying that those Bitcoin are mine. You can't seize them. He has also put in motions, or I guess his lawyer has put in motions on his behalf saying that the money laundering charge should be dropped because the IRS said Bitcoin isn't money. Bitcoin is property. Right. You can't launder money if the thing that's being supposedly laundered isn't money. Well, it's it's got a whole economic system built up behind it, and, and we can't have something so... Uh, powerful running against us because that could corrupt the entire currency of the u.s government well and i i i'm one of these people that i don't think that bitcoin should be considered money no it's i mean definitely you... a currency but once you have a government classify something as money then there's a whole slew of regulations and laws that wind up coming in place to where they can then charge you with money laundering So how if are you... you don't go through the proper processes of transferring it from one person to another. Right. Okay. So how are you using the definition of currency here versus money? Is currency like anything that you can use to barter with? Rocks so, so it could currency. be like logs that I split in my backyard. I could use that as currency. If you use it as a barter tool, it is currency. Okay, but it's not technically money because it's not regulated? Money, and I, I use the word money to mean anything that has been given legal tender status. Okay, legal so tender status meaning that someone has decreed from on high that you must accept this thing for any debt, public or private. So if you pull out a dollar bill out of your wallet or out of your pocket, if you're driving, don't do it while you're driving. But the next time you get a chance, look at a dollar bill and it says, this note is legal tender for all debts, public and private. Meaning that, Ellen, if I say, you know, we're going to do this transaction and you owe me $17. Wow. Wow. Those cookies were pretty good. Thank and you, Daryl. You try to hand me some Federal Reserve notes, which are the bills that people have in their wallet that most people just call dollars. And I say, no, no, I will not take those. I am violating federal law by refusing your dollars. That's what legal tender means. Is that you can't refuse it? You cannot refuse it under penalty of law. Wow, that's that's insane. That's like, why what, I don't so, want Bitcoin to be given, you know, some legal status of money because then they could issue some kind of decree saying you must accept this. You must accept this. Right, but I think I think it would be nearly impossible for the US government to regulate Bitcoin just solely because it's like anonymous if you know how to use it correctly, you you can be anonymous. Like if you don't, then it's probably right, linked well, to your name. But bills I mean, but, can be anonymous, but you still have to like you still tie your den identity to them in some way. Like either you're handing the money to the person face to face and like they know who you are, or you're doing a, a wire transfer or something like that. If and, I go like, to the Walmart in the neighboring town, they're probably not going to know who I am, and I could buy whatever I want, and as long as I pay cash, there's no record of that. So cash, in some ways, is more anonymous than Bitcoin because Bitcoin has the blockchain. Of course, you can call in, talk about this, or anything else, 855-450-FREE. This is the Central Scrutinizer. I steal your labor by force through taxation. My job is to spy on you and keep you from hearing things like the Freedom Fiends. I especially do not want you to torrent Freedom Fiends episodes to keep them drone-proof. Do not go to freedomfiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Do not go to freedomfiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Do not go to freedomfiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives.
Imagine a world in which out-of-control governments monitor every action of every person. Wait, that's today's world. But it's still possible to take control of your own life and your own identity. Start building a new world. Visit mathgate.info and learn basic reasoning skills. Earn pseudonymous academic credentials. That is, earn cryptographic proof that the owner of your Bitcoin address learned these skills. Apply for jobs online using your Bitcoin address instead of your name. Take control of your future. Visit mathgate.info. Hey everyone, have you heard about the No No Hair Removal Device that's sweeping the globe? If you want to go weeks without shaving and get smooth, professional quality results, here's our favorite host Cheryl for No No Hair Removal. Thanks. Hey gals, I love talking about my No No. It's this cute little hair removal system that you can take with you and use almost anywhere at home or on the road. No more expensive in-office treatments, painful waxing, and no more wasting your valuable time. Got unwanted facial hair? No No has patented Thermacon technology that works on all hair and skin colors. So it's perfect for using on all body parts. And now you can take advantage of this incredible risk-free trial. Get the No-No, the facial kit, a travel case, and a $100 discount shopping card. And you don't risk a penny to try it. Try the incredible No-No hair completely risk-free. Call 1-800-953-6062. That's 800-953-6062. 800-953-6062. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. I've always wanted to change the world. So I moved to the Shire to join people who were actually working towards doing the same thing. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here, and I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. This is the Liberty Radio Network, broadcasting the latest liberty-oriented audio content 24 hours a day at lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You can call in, talk about whatever is on your mind. We've been talking about government corruptions, Bitcoin, And, you know, the government, at least at the federal level here in the U.S., possibly maybe trying to regulate Bitcoin in some way. But there's one thing that they can't regulate, and that is your online privacy. And if you value your online privacy, then you need ProXPN. What is ProXPN, you ask? ProXPN is a global virtual private network that allows all of your online data to be encrypted back and forth even before it gets to your ISP. Did you know that most ISPs keep records of every site you visit and every search you make for at least six months and in some cases up to five years? 
Those records can be obtained by anyone with a court order, so don't be surprised if at some point it becomes normal for, say, part of a job interview that they want to look at your internet history from the last six months. Without a service like ProXPN, everything you do online is tracked back to you. From downloading movies and music to every single web page you go to, With ProXPN, you simply download an app for Windows, Mac, iOS, or Android. Linux has a slightly different setup, but trust me, it's easy. And I'm not a tech-savvy computer guy, and the Linux setup is very simple. It's not a download, but it's still very simple to do. Then you just connect to the internet, and you're connected. No one can track you or spy on you, and one account works for all of your devices simultaneously. No need to have a separate account for each device. Just go to proxpn.com slash FTL, use the promo code FTL20, and you'll get 20% off the price of your premium account, which if you get the annual plan, adds up to only $5 per month. With the premium account, you get unlimited bandwidth, servers all over the world to access from, the ability to privately torrent, get past regionally blocked websites, and this is important, ProXPN doesn't keep records of your online habits at all. You get all of that with a risk-free 7-day money-back guarantee. Go to ProXPN.com slash FTL Use promo code FTL20 and get the security and privacy that you have a right to have. Ellen, you have a story about apparently a Senate committee that happened recently about the dangers of Bitcoin. Oh, yeah. Well, I don't know if I would say it's recently. This article was written on the 19th of November in 2013. So this was like nine months ago. But it still has some really good points in here about uh, problems that the government is having with Bitcoin and they can't figure it out. Okay. Okay. So the the article from the, the American, the new American, I'm sorry, TheNewAmerican.com, and uh, it's called Government is Taking Steps to Regulate Bitcoin. Senators attending this week's hearing entitled Beyond Silk Road, Potential Risks, Threats, and Promises of Virtual Currencies, being held by the Senate Homeland Security and Governmental Affairs Committee, likely should have predicted what they were going to hear. The Securities and Exchange Commission, or the SEC, made the case that the increasingly popular cryptocurrency, the Bitcoin was actually a security and should be regulated. The Department of Homeland Security has already adopted the aggressive posture to address the emerging threat and criminal exploitation of virtual currency systems, and the Treasury Department had recently produced two rules on how exchanges should handle how exchanges should handle the Bitcoin. Two government agencies missing at the hearing were the Internal Revenue System or Internal Revenue Service and the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. I think those are two like pretty important uh, big government like agencies that well, should not have been missing there. Like we we know what the IRS decided. They put out a statement about a month ago saying that Bitcoin is property, which basically means that according to the IRS, Bitcoin should be treated like gold or silver or any other thing in which if it gains value throughout the year, you pay a capital gains tax on. And if it loses value throughout the year, you get to deduct it as a capital loss. Right. Which puts a very interesting uh, distinction of sorts and a conflict of regulation between the IRS, who is saying that Bitcoin is property like gold and silver, and FinCEN, who is saying, no, no, Bitcoin is money, and anybody who buys and sells Bitcoin for other than personal use must register as a money services business. Right. Actually, the article goes on to talk about this. 
It okay. Said, the IRS apparently can't figure out how to tax private transactions between people who may reside in different countries doing business in the ether, while the CFTC is still trying to determine if Bitcoin is a commodity to regulate, which apparently they've already decided that it is a commodity. And um, so I guess that question has well, been answered who, who since this the article CFTC? was written. Uh, the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. I'm not sure if they have come out with a regulation. I just know that the IRS has. So all of these different agencies are coming up with their own rulings and their own regulations, and there isn't a standard regulation that goes across the board. Right, because they can't, like this article says, they can't figure out how to tax these private transactions, especially when, uh, like, it, if it's going between countries there's there's a tr an issue with converting the currencies and also like it's not actually regulated by other countries either so like there'd be no way to know how much they should be taxing right but on the irs forms if me and you ellen if we do a transaction to where you give me a sandwich and i give you a chicken let's say that, fair trade, fair trade. That, that, that's a barter. Right. And that is to be noted on your IRS form when you fill out your IRS taxes at the end of the year, if you do so. I acquired a chicken this year. So we, we would have to figure out the capital gain of the chicken versus the sandwich. So I would probably wind up with a capital loss, meaning that I could deduct the chicken as some sort of expense, you would wind up with a capital gain. So you would have to figure out what the cost of the sandwich was at the time and what the cost of the chicken is now. And then that would wind up being, you know, income for you. Oh, goodness. And there's also on, I believe it's line 21 of the IRS form 1040, that if you read the instructions for that line, you are to include income from illegal activities. Right, but who's going to report those? I mean, that's pretty much self I don't know, but they want you to self-report. Well, there's other things that get reported on that line. So, you know, they can't then look, oh, well, line 21, you put something meaning you did illegal things. It's all sorts of non-reported, other non-reported income so right. if you do any work for your next door neighbor, you rake their leaves and they give you ten dollars, well, then I'm, you're supposed to include that there. Right. Well, I mean, obviously, if you're doing work under the table, you don't want that regulated. So why on earth would you ever think about self-reporting? That just doesn't seem to make sense. Like in in no way is that going to work. That there are some people who have done, you know. They, they don't necessarily call it under the table work. They just consider, it, you know, I got paid cash. And because when I get old and retire, I want there to be Social Security for me. I'm going to file these things every quarter and pay into Social Security so that when I get old, I have retirement. Like a good citizen. So I wanted to go into the last uh, art the last part of this article. Because, yeah, go ahead. Uh, this is the most interesting part to me. The Department of Justice warned about how the Bitcoin enables money laundering, illicit tax shelters, and anom anonymous purchases of illegal drugs, child pornography, and stolen credit card information. So apparently Bitcoin is only used for these terrible situations and not for anything like, you know, just regular goods and services. Yeah, and cash is used for the same things. Everything that you can do that's quote unquote evil with Bitcoin, you can do with cash. So it, it's absolutely ludicrous. Stay tuned. Hour two coming up next. You can call in 855-450-FREE. Quantum vibe. It's year 2523. There are colonies on Venus, Mars, and Mercury. People travel in bubbles, fly at hyperspeed. With brain implants and artificial gravity. A scientific genius and his clever assistant set out on an adventure through the solar system on a secret mission to find the key to access new frontiers and save liberty. QuantumVibe.com from Big Head Press.
Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at freeross.org. That's freeross.org. Imagine for a moment a radio program, the most personal of mediums, that reaches hundreds of thousands of people on more than 140 radio stations across the U.S. and around the world through the Internet with podcasts and live streams. Imagine the advertising is affordable from $600 to $6,000 a month. Free Talk Live is that program. We will work with you to get clicks, calls, views, or sales. Email me at mark at freetalklive.com. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Friday, June 20th, 2014. Silver is trading at $20.76 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,313 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $593. Antiwar.com reports, though President Obama insisted he isn't demanding such a move, the White House has made it clear they want Iraqi Prime Minister Nouri al-Malaki ousted in favor of a new Prime Minister who would be less despised by Sunni Arabs and Kurds. Three candidates have stepped forward so far to try to claim the position of U.S.-approved successor to the Malaki government, all of them Shiites from other factions. Adel Abdul Mahdi, a former vice president and top figure in the Supreme Islamic Iraqi Council, is one of the candidates and was close to getting the position in 2006. He is seen as favorable by the Kurdish political bloc, which could help him. Former Badir Brigade Commander Bayan Jabbar is another possible Supreme Islamic Iraqi Council candidate and, as a former interior minister, has some claim to being the most militarily savvy choice. His interior ministry term saw widespread torture of prisoners, however, and that would not be viewed favorably by Sunnis. Finally, we have the notorious Ahmed Kalabi from the Iraqi National Congress. One of the main architects of the 2003 U.S. invasion and occupation of Iraq, Kalabi is trying to position himself as the moderate choice, insisting he opposes the debathification laws that he previously was in charge of enforcing. His long history of harsh mistreatment of the Sunnis is likely to harm his credibility as a unifier, but his long history of support from the U.S. and Iran might give him the inside track to being the U.S. approved ruler. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Coinbase. Coinbase is a simple and secure online Bitcoin wallet for sending, receiving, and storing Bitcoin. Get started at coinbase.fppradio.com. That's coinbase.fppradio.com. The Associated Press reports, a federal appeals court says a Los Angeles law that bars people from living in parked vehicles is unconstitutional. The 9th U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals ruled Thursday that the 1983 law was vaguely written and discriminates against homeless and poor people. The three-judge panel ruled the law opens the door to discriminatory enforcement against the homeless and the poor. The decision came in a case brought on behalf of four people who were cited and arrested in the Venice area by police who concluded the numerous belongings in their RVs and cars meant they were violating the law. 
The ruling overturned a lower court judge who had sided with the city. The complaint stemmed from the 2010 arrest of four people who were all detained in separate encounters. The action was part of LAPD efforts to reduce the number of homeless people sleeping in cars in the beachside neighborhood. Attorney Carol Sobel, who brought the case on behalf of the four individuals, said, The court struck down the law. I think the message from the court to the city is, you need to take a different approach. We're not going to let you put people in jail just because they don't have a place to sleep. Sobel said among the plaintiffs was a man who had lost his job and later his house in the economic downturn. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Roberts & Roberts Brokerage. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They now take Bitcoin for purchasing precious metals so you can turn your profits into a long-term investment. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing. 800-874-9760 Antiwar.com reports an unnamed top administration official says that President Obama, in announcing his planned military intervention in Iraq, was not ruling out airstrikes against targets inside Syria as well. The unnamed official said, We don't restrict potential U.S. actions to a specific geographic space. Though it was the fall of territory in Iraq that got the administration on the intervention bandwagon against ISIS. The group has at least as much territory in northern and eastern Syria, where it has has been the most successful of Syria's rebels. U.S. involvement in Syria against ISIS would put it in a position of aiding the Assad government despite months of throwing arms and money at various rebel factions. It would also add to anti-U.S. sentiment among regional Sunnis since it would amount to the U.S. attacking the largest Sunni rebel faction fighting against two Shiite-ruled nations. This has been FPP Radio News, online at FPP Radio. Dot com. A new report from the Department of Health and Human Services urges Americans to do something, anything at all. According to the study, getting off your ass and doing any sort of physical or mental activity could have positive health effects. Look, we're not expecting you to go to the gym. That's clearly not happening. Just walk outside for a few blocks and then come back home. You can bring potato chips if that's what it'll take. For many years, the health department has encouraged Americans to watch less TV. But this report reverses that, saying, quote, Watch whatever the hell you want, but at least pay attention and remember who the characters are. Or just admire the colors. Colors are pretty. It's expected that following the advice in this report will cut down on the largest cause of death among Americans, laying on your back until your mouth fills up with saliva and you drown. Following the report's release, the most popular exercise now seems to be masturbating. But researchers warned that if you do it in public, stick to the sidewalk or you might get hit by cars. This is the Onion News Network. Free Talk Live, 855-450 free. That's 855-450-3733. You can call in, talk about whatever is on your mind. You can also Skype into the show. Skype username is lrn.fm. Or, of course, you could go to the website, freetalklive.com, and you can give us show prep. One of the stories on the front page is something that we actually talked about earlier in the show the U.S. Marshals accidentally replying all to the anonymous or the people that were supposed to be anonymous bidders on the Bitcoin that are to be auctioned off by the U.S. Marshals. Yeah, how silly would you feel if you were that guy? You're like, oh, oh my gosh, I just replied all. That guy's not going to be held accountable. Well, I'm and sure because he felt it's guilty. Not coming, it's not coming from Bill Johnson at usmarshals.com. It's coming from just the U.S. Marshals web or you know their email address. Right, but I'm not. I'm not saying that he knew he was going to get in trouble. I'm just saying like you would feel like a total idiot if you did something like that. Like yeah, I, I didn't would. remember to click the selected people to send it to. Like I. Sent oh, it to I, everyone. I accidentally put everybody in the carbon copy instead of blind carbon copy. And I've done that occasionally. And then somebody will generally send a reply of, hey, I don't mind you sending me emails that go to a bunch of other people, but please hit blind carbon copy next time. And I was like, 
yeah, I put it in the wrong spot. Apologies. So, you know. Right. But this is like some it, a much larger happens. case. This is a much larger case right. that must be taken with more seriousness. And the fact that like the person in charge of keeping these people anonymous completely failed at it. I just like the level of of like inadequacy here is just astonishing to me. Right. But, you know, again, he's a government employee, which being a government employee, much like being in love means never having to say you're sorry. Uh, and you're probably way too young to catch that reference. There was a movie that came out in the 70s, and there was a famous line, being in love means never having to say you're sorry. Wait, what is this movie? I, might, uh, I may have seen it. Love Story? No, I haven't seen it. That's the name of <laughs> the, the movie love story. Love Story? Okay. No, not The Love Story, just Love Story. And apparently I, I saw something that they're going to be remaking that movie sometime soon and i i don't know who's going to be in it but the original movie wasn't that great the only reason that i ever saw it is i was on a flight going across country and it was the movie and i couldn't <laughs> fall asleep and i was like eh, i got the headphones why not yeah and well they so ran I out of it and it was, eh. <laughs> well i mean the, i'm sure the remake isn't going to be much better but you know, they ran out of ideas for new movies like 10 years ago. So now they're just going through the list of what's already in existence and remaking yeah. it a thousand times. Or making a sequel. Or, hey, let's take The Hobbit, which is like a 200-page book, and let's make three movies out of it. Right. Which, I haven't read this, but I know people who have, and they're, they're really irritated that like the last movie is just going to be about the last like 20 pages of the book. I don't know. I had the book on tape when I was a kid, and it scared me. I don't remember what part it was, but just the way there there was one part to where they were in, like, a cave or something, and it scared me. And I, I always got scared listening to the book on tape in that I'm one sorry, spot. I'm sorry, Daryl. I, I hope you aren't frightened now by the prospect of a gold-protecting dragon. Wait, there's dragons? Are we, We're talking about... Wait, what are the we? The Hobbit. The Hobbit, yes. I don't remember dragons. I just remember being scared because of the sounds for the part where they went in the cave. Okay, well, um, I'm not quite sure what you're talking about. Yeah, but in the end, there's, there's, there's a dragon that's protecting the, the dwarven castle, and they have to go in and find the Ark Stone. So am I the only person that got scared of The Hobbit book on tape when... <laughs> They were I haven't child. even listened to it, so I, I can't make any claims, but I don't know. But you know, you the listener, you can call in, talk about movies or books on tape that scared you as a child. We'll we'll try to be your therapist. We We've, shall be Freudian psychoanalysts. We, we don't make any promises of how good that you know we will do with therapy because obviously, you know, like I need therapy for the whole the hobbit scared me. But you can call in 855 450 free. That's 855-450-3733. And Ellen, you've got a story here. I do. It is uh, from the LibertyDoll.com. And this is one that you just recently shared with me, Daryl. Yes. And it's titled, 11 Things Status Taught Me About Being a Libertarian. But you don't like the word status. You I, say I don't. I, I prefer to say those who love the state. And a lot of people who love the state don't even realize that they love the state. Right, and I, I think the words are like kind of synonymous, but I guess it's more descriptive to call them that. But I'm just going to stick with status because it's much faster to say okay. than those who love the state. So, status have truly taught me a lot about what it means to be a libertarian. Actually, they seem to ho know a whole lot more about it than I do. Those, through seemingly nonsensical debates, straw arguments, and name-calling, I've begun to see the error of my ways. To show my appreciation for all that these statists have done for me, I've decided to compile a list so that the other libertarians can be aware too. Here are the 11 most important things statists have taught me about being a libertarian. Number one, due to my belief to the right to bear arms, I have a small penis. Being a woman, I haven't really worked out what this means for me, but it definitely has something to do with genitals. And you, you know what she's referencing here is... Whenever you see a picture of somebody with a big gun or somebody driving a large truck or a really fancy car, 
they're the compensating for right, something, you're right? You're compensating for something. So if you like guns, then obviously you're inadequate <laughs> where it counts. Right. And that's just, just that is assuming so much about a person. Just say, oh, you own a gun. You obviously have like self confidence issues that you need to make up with this this violent weapon of You've mass got a discretion. You've Napoleon complex. Right. And like the fact that it's viewed as a weapon of destruction. Like no, it's a it's a tool, just the same as a knife is. That can also be used as a weapon, but it can also be a useful house tool, like to cut up meat if you're like making steaks I've or whatever. I've never cut meat with a firearm. No, but you... I, I've killed things that have been <laughs> turned into meat with a firearm. What I'm trying to say is that a gun is a tool, just the same as any other thing, and. It, you can use it for self-defense, but it, on the other side of the coin, it can also be used in aggressive ways, which is like right, but what it's so always could a assumed. Lead pencil. Exactly. I remember when I was in middle school, there were two students that got into an argument about something. I don't remember what it was, but the one grabbed a pencil and just like hit the other one in the arm and the tip of the pencil broke off in the kid's arm yeah and are you gonna say that kid has like three years later the lead never came out i mean that's terrible and i'm sorry you went through that that just like that's awful i just witnessed it i didn't have the pencil jabbed in my arm it's still traumatic to witness something like that yeah but like are they gonna claim that that kid has a napoleon complex or that he has security issues no he's inadequate (laughs) because (laughs) he is the pencil he a number two pencil. Okay, but he probably wasn't at the age where he realized that he was inadequate yet. I just, like, see, for me being a woman, like, I, I think that hit the nail on the head with that second line. I haven't really worked out what this means for me, but it definitely means it has something to do with genitals. Yes. So, like, I, you know, doesn't really apply to me. And like, then I like if the- I want to have a gun, like, that doesn't mean that I'm inadequate in some way, does it? Oh, yeah, it does. It does. I'm just not, I, I'm with the author of this article, not really sure in what way, but I really like the uh, graphic that they have where they label the different parts of the gun <laughs> to different parts of human anatomy. Uh, go on to number two real quick on the list. Okay. I am wrong. I will always be wrong, and no amount of logic, reasoning, or research will ever change that. There's also a good chance that I'm illiterate, so I might as well just give up now. Yeah, and I I have something that I want to say about that, and I will do that when we come back. And of course, if you've got anything to add about what those who love the state have taught you about being a libertarian, call in 855-450-FREE. This is Free Talk Live. I want to share something important that will not only improve your life, but the lives of many others as well. And all you need to do is drink coffee. I'm not talking about harmful store-bought or chain coffee. No, this is truly the best of the best coffee. We've partnered with Kamano Island Coffee Roasters to offer BuzzBox. With every purchase, 10% goes towards our efforts to give the gift of human freedom by providing at least 100 microfinance loans via World Vision. So literally, just one cup at a time, you're having an impact in helping make a difference in the world and one sip will have you buzzing to family and friends to prove just how good it is we're giving a free pound of coffee to everyone in the audience all you do is cover shipping go to coffee.freetalklive.com buzzbox coffee is organic so it contains no pesticides or toxins it's shade grown so less acidity and no heartburn it's top one percent arabica grade and gives people the opportunity to own their own coffee farms join us in making a huge impact at coffee.freetalklive.com Amanda Bolso here from Midas Resources. Today, June 10th, 2014, gold opened at 1261.10. A one ounce gold coin can be purchased for 1307.17, for a half ounce, or 326.79 for a quarter ounce. Again, that's 1307.17, and 326.79. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. Have you ever wondered why banks, stockbrokers, investment advisors won't talk about gold IRAs? Wait a sec. Gold and silver is going up while Congress is trying to settle on the next debt increase. And there's no end to this madness. That old 401k and IRA can be converted into physical gold without tax consequences. 
I explain this in my book, 10 Reasons to Buy Gold. Don't let time slip away. Call for your free copy today, 800-686-2237. Get away from that Washington spin and get honest answers about gold. 800-686-2237. The book is free, 800-686-2237. I've been told no in many different ways. I give you an order and you're going to obey it. Who told you you can go this way? You can do that and you have to leave here. You cannot bring time into the rally. Walk with me. Well, I'm, I'm, no, I'm comfortable me. here, actually. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, hey, hey. 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 Who do you think you Excuse are? me. There is no video or audio allowed in this office. No, I have work today. This is... You ain't going to make it. Wait, no, now. Wait a minute. Oh, Whoa. Hey! Oh my god! Unbelievable! Why are you running from Because you're scared of property. What am I being detained for? You're being served. What is this? What is this? Bureaucrats have a funny way of telling people no. That's the sound of the men working on the chain. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at victimlesscrimespree.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. If there was a place that liberty-minded people had been elected to political positions and were rolling back government, would you move there? If freedom lovers had secured a 20% voting block and can veto most bad bills, would you move? Well, the time has come to sign the pledge at freestateproject.org. These things have happened in New Hampshire, and you can join us and help. freestateproject.org. Sign up now at freestateproject.org. You can sign up to receive the latest about the Liberty Radio Network via our email updates at updates.lrn.fm. That's updates.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You can call in, talk about whatever is on your mind. 855 450 free. That's 855-450-3733. That is the Pro XPN toll-free call-in line. Or you can call in using the Skypes. Skype username is lrn.fm. We would love to talk to you. And the we in studio tonight is Daryl. And Ellen. And we'll get back to the list of... 11 things that those who love the state have taught us about being libertarian. But first, I want to make sure that I tell you about ExpressCoin, because ExpressCoin is the best choice for buying Bitcoin or Dogecoin. More easy, so fast, much legal, wow, inexpensive. ExpressCoin prides themselves on their customer service, so much so that the back end on the website should allow them to be even more pro- even more focused on meeting your needs. Get your cryptocurrencies with money order, check, or wire transfer by starting off at expresscoin.com. You can even do it from your smartphone by downloading the app at expresscoin.com. I've used them in the past. They used to be called Cash Into Coins. They've changed the name to Express Coin. Still great customer service. Still easy. Still no fees on orders of less than $40. Very small fee on orders over $40. Expresscoin.com. Change is a good thing. Change can be a good thing. Yes. Especially if you're turning that change into cryptocurrency that allows you to send the currency worldwide. That was a good plan, in, words, like, Daryl. The snap of your fingers. Well, maybe not that fast, but it's very fast and a lot faster and easier right. than 
trying to ship a $2 bill across the globe. I remember when I first used cash into coins and it was a $40 order and it only took like a day or two for me to get my bitcoins. So I guess it's not the fastest in the world, but I mean, if you're going through an agency like this, it's right. it's and a lot faster than you are using, some other ones. you know, a check of money order or a wire transfer and wire transfer does take a little bit of time, but it's still a lot faster than setting up an account on one of the online exchanges, giving them all of your private information, personal information, giving them access to your bank account, and then initiating a bank transfer that way. Right. And I'm sure it's the the bank's end where they're lacking. That's where the, the real slowdown comes from. Yes. Because they're like, oh, we have to make sure that this is legitimate and do an investigation mm-hmm. into like the the entire request process. Right. But- I was going to set up a PayPal account this afternoon for a congressional candidate here in New Hampshire. I'm helping on the campaign. And I put in the name of the candidate, the name of the campaign, the mailing address. And then the next step was we need the employee ID number or the last four digits of the social security number for this person. We also need his date of birth. And by the way, in big, bold letters, this is required by the USA Patriot Act. So they they were made they made sure to let you know why you were getting screwed over like this and why they needed this excess we, of we information. We need a lot of personal information before we will let you take money using our service, and it's all because of the federal government. And Yay. if we don't like those things, then apparently we are wrong. We will always be wrong. We have always been wrong. And no amount of logic, reasoning, or research will ever change that. There's also a good chance that we're illiterate, even though we're reading things off of the internet. Well, you might as well just give up now. Yeah, we we should. Although, I, I do find it very ironic that the principled libertarians, and I'm using the term principled libertarians to differentiate between the libertarians who call themselves libertarians but still think well no we need the government to go do x y and z we we need to make sure that we're bombing this country or that country so the minarchist is what you're talking about no there there are some people like wayne root and bob Barr, who for a time called themselves libertarians who were advocating these horribly anti-libertarian positions There are still people that are in the Libertarian Party who are advocating building a giant border fence on the U.S.-Mexican border, but somehow they don't say that we need a fence on the Canadian border, which is much longer and has just as much opportunity for people to sneak across illegally. Right. Well, I mean, there are some issues that I guess even if you are like— principled in in some aspects that you just cannot bend on where you definitely need regulation like i know most people i talk to they're like well we need we at least need like police to enforce the laws and we need some sort of judge or like court order in order to like have a third party arbitrator to make sure that cases are fair but i mean most often when i'm talking to people who are not libertarian more specifically like people who are quite anti-libertarian right um and, like, if I bring up the issue, like, I don't think that the government should be spying on people's emails or phone calls. I think people deserve, like, the right to privacy. And then you get the argument, like, well, we need to do it for the safety of the American people. Like, if, if they can catch terrorists by reading through my emails, by all means, go ahead. Yeah. It's like, just give it up. That's fine. And, like, obviously my point is wrong. Like, they're offended that I want their rights protected. Like, it's not just about me that I'm right. bringing this up. Like, it's about everyone. I don't want anyone's rights to, rights to be violated. Right. And it's just ridiculous to me that uh, people find it so nonsensical that you would, like, want to have principles. And, right. Like, so they, what, what I was going to say is that the principled libertarians, they use logic and reasoning. That's why they are libertarians. Well, unless they're just taking advantage of the name to get a certain group of votes. 
like it's, those people aren't principled libertarians then right but if, if you're calling people that, that, who want why like I'm, wider border patrol libertarian then you're using the I'm word i'm not calling like, them libertarians they're calling themselves libertarians right but that's a very broad use of the term i feel like right it's uh what they call the big tent definition and i've said before that in the big tent of libertarianism the elephants poop on the actual libertarians so uh what is this big tent of libertarianism is it just like if you believe in reducing taxes at least a little bit you can be called a libertarian basically if you're not barack obama or adolf hitler you're a libertarian (laughs) in the big tent world of libertarianism if you want anything smaller than what we have now you're a libertarian Right. Even if cut the federal budget by one penny, you're a libertarian. But you're still going to not be paid attention to by either of the larger parties. I guess that's why you're saying that everybody in the big tent gets pooped on by the elephant. Because, no, like, because even if you are the third party, you're not going to be given credit. No, because generally the people who advocate the quote-unquote big tent libertarianism or people that have come to the Libertarian Party from the Republican Party and want to water down the message to basically keep the Libertarian Party from ever being successful. You can call in with your thoughts. Lied to. lied to by Washington politicians and the Wall Street propaganda machine. My name is Brett Kitchen, best-selling author, and I want to give you free access to my new DVD set, The Millionaire Black Box. Because after losing 35% in my IRA in the crash years ago, I said enough. And since then, I've filmed interviews with dozens of millionaires across the country. I was shocked to discover they don't use mutual funds or worry about stock market crashes. They make double digits in good years and bad. Call now to get this DVD where millionaires reveal five specific wealth strategies like private lending contracts, how to use your IRAs or cash in the bank to make potential double digits each year, tax-free retirement income using the biggest benefits left in the tax code, and how to beat inflation with two strategies you'll never hear from Wall Street. Call 1-800-324-3030 to get free access to the Millionaire Black Box videos and learn the secrets the ultra-rich use to grow your money and protect your wealth. Plus, the next 47 callers get a free copy of my best-selling book, Safe Money Millionaire. Just cover shipping and handling. Call 800-324-3030. Again, that's 1-800-324-3030. 1-800-324-3030. If you're looking for work, or even if you're not, here's an innocent mistake you really want to avoid. Never return calls before listening to your voicemail. Your wireless phone sends calls you didn't answer into voicemail, and it shows you phone numbers for calls you missed. Important, don't call back callers you missed until you have first listened to your messages. Otherwise, you frustrate people who bother to leave messages by asking them to repeat a message they just left as your voicemail greeting instructed them to. If you're a job applicant, this alone could be a deal killer. And even if you're not, there are few things you can convey to someone that are as fundamentally maddening as, I didn't hear you. With money and attention so scarce now, effective communication skills have never been more important. For more tips for job seekers and everyone else, hit survivalspeech.com. I'm Holland Cook. This Your Family Today tip is brought to you by Boost Kit Essentials Nutritionally Complete Drink. Providing your picky eater with essential nutrition and great taste in one drink. Visit us at kitessentials.com. To make sure your kids eat healthy, follow the five-a-day plan. Serve three servings of vegetables and two servings of fruit daily. Remember, a serving could just mean a piece of fruit or a half cup of veggies. If your kids are picky eaters, ask a nutritionist about other sources. For more tips like these, visit us at parenthood.com slash yourfamilytoday. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. Free Talk Live. I did all this construction. Well, I had the uh, the inspector come through, and he tells me it looks really good, but I think it looks better with Mr. Hamilton. I go, excuse me? He grabs the sledgehammer, and he just starts tearing the place apart. He says it'd be better with Mr. Hamilton. He was looking for payoff. A $10 know? bill? The guy was crazy. He went into my kitchen. 
and uh, he asked for Mr. Lincoln. I, I'm, I'm, I don't think I believe you. My mother left me a, a, a porcelain doll collection that he just went to town on. And <laughs> this, this, is, this is the problem with, with having to have inspections. Thanks for the call, man. No, no, that was believable at the very first point. The guy was asking for Mr. Hamilton. <laughs> Mr. Ha- How about Mr. Alexander Franklin? Hamilton is on the front of a $10 bill. <laughs> I mean, I'm like, holy crap, he's banging holes in the wall for $10 bill? <laughs> Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. What's up next? Visit the Liberty Radio Network program guide to find out at shows.lrn.fm. That's shows.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live, you can call in. Take control of the airwaves. We're talking about things that we have learned from those who love the state. There's a list from the website, thelibertydoll.com. We'll get back to the list in just a moment. But do you need focus? Are you feeling fatigued? Trying to get that extra edge when it counts? There's just so much going on all at once in our lives these days. Every moment, it seems like we can't keep track of everything and we're tired. Don't you wish that there was something that could get you out of the rut, give you the focus that you need, and help you get things done? Well, there may be. Modafinil from ModUp.net. Studies show that one in five students use this cognitive enhancer, offering multiple benefits, including a double-digit increase in short-term memory, fighting off fatigue, and greater focus overall so you can get things done. Businessmen from around the world continue to talk about how Modafinil from ModUp.net is making the difference in their work, giving them that critical edge that they need. Check out Modafinil at ModUp.net. Look into it for yourself. They offer fast delivery worldwide, for guaranteed high-quality modafinil at an amazing price. And modup.net is a supporter of the Bitcoin community. That's right. You can order from modup.net with Bitcoin and get a 33% discount. And to make the deal even sweeter, use the code FTL and you'll get 10 free tablets with your order. So use that code FTL. Remember, Free Talk Live is an international radio show, and ModUp.net ships worldwide. It's your responsibility to know if local prescription requirements and laws apply. Please, we recommend you look into it for yourself, but we're sure you'll find ModUp.net offers a great service at a great price. That's ModUp.net. Use the code FTL. ModUp.net. Code FTL. So, Ellen, let's go back to the list here. I think we're on number three of the 11 things that we have learned from those who love the state. About why we are libertarians. About libertarianism. Yes. I don't know if it's number three because I'm illiterate and I should not be trying, but I will try and uh, see if I can decipher what this next sentence says. Because I believe in private rather than government-run charity, I hate poor people and would rather see people die than risk being nice to them. I also hate sick people, Obamacare, old ru- old people, Social Security, and children. Just because they're children. Right, because like everything like you, that you I want is... You don't need an is... excuse to hate children. No, I mean, I, I can just, you know, decide to do things that are not for the children, like pay your taxes... It goes to the children for the children. The, the elementary school needs a new like ten thousand dollar gym for the children. Well, that's a very cheap gym. <laughs> I'm just throwing Are out they numbers using here. Using child labor to build that gym because you know most gyms nowadays cost like you know well, millions see, of dollars. If the company that was building the gym used child labor, it would be that cheap. And that company would probably be run by libertarians because there's nothing that says that child labor is physical abuse. 
<laughs> and just in in case anybody listening cannot tell, Ellen is being sarcastic right now. Quite facetious. Don't believe anything Tongue I'm saying. Tongue firmly planted in cheek. And, and foot firmly down throat. No, I that that's something your, different. No, you put your foot in your mouth when you want to take back something you've said. Oh, right. Yes, but not when you're being sarcastic, unless you're trying to take back the sarcastic thing that you said. But we will get back to this list in just a moment. But since this show is about you and your calls or your Skypes in this case, Nathan Skyping in wants to talk about the Pork Fest that's coming up next week. Woo-hoo. That's P O R C F E S T, as in porcupine, not as in the tasty meat that comes from swine. Nathan, you're on Free Talk Live with Daryl and Ellen. What's on your mind? Hi, Daryl. Hi, Ellen. Hey, uh, Nathan. First, first, I want to say that I loved The Hobbit as a kid. So uh, I'll have to check out that audiobook you were talking about there. Yeah, I don't remember who put out the audio book. I just remember that it was one that came out when I was a kid. I played it on some tape player, and I actually had a book that went with it, and it scared me. Did the narrator have a dark, seedy voice? He did have a dark voice, and then there was just the one part to where, like, something about a cave, and there were all these weird background noises, and it scared me. Was he a British actor by any chance? I don't remember. It's been probably 30 years since I've listened to The Hobbit on audiobook. All I remember is that it scared me. But did The Hobbit people sound like Simon Cowell? I don't remember. Probably. They they were probably British. All great voice actors are British. That's that's what I was getting at. <laughs> <laughs> they, they seem to have a preference for some reason for British voice actors. It's just so um, relaxing, and the accent is like it. Uh, it brings you back to like more, uh, you know, uh, traditional times. I guess. Um, so about Pork Fest, unfortunately, I won't be able to go as I have other commitments. Uh, but I did want to ask you about it. Um, Certainly. Ian, Ian frequently talks about it and has this comment that he makes where he says. Most people going to Pork Fest, it's their first time. So by implication, most of the people who have already gone are not returning. No. So my question no, was that that's not necessarily the truth because uh, there are more and more people that show up every year. I'm sure the number's not expanding exponentially though, but I'm sure I, if, I would not say that it's let's most. Say, I would say that there's a sizable amount of people that go to hear the speakers. See, what I think he's trying to say here is like if we made a pie chart and we divided it up into sections, there's like the people who are coming to Pork Fest for the first time, second, third, fourth, fifth, whatever, like the people who are coming the first probably have the largest portion of the pie. Yes. And also, Ian always says that when he gives his speech he or his presentation, whatever you want to call it, he will ask the audience, raise your hand if this is your first pork fest. And the majority of the people in his speech, it's their first pork fest, which means that the people who are there for the second and the third or the fourth or the tenth time, they're not necessarily going to the speeches and the presentations because they have figured out where the parties actually are, and they're going there to hang out and party. They're not necessarily going there to hear the speechifying. Well, I did hear someone, I don't know if it was Cody O'Connor or someone else, they said something like, yeah, I don't care about the speakers. I'm just going to party. So, Well, I, I'm going to meet people and party, I should yeah. say. Not, yeah, they, not... there are a lot of people that do that. Yeah, it's a great opportunity, too. So what per, what proportion of people that go to Pork Fest move to New Hampshire would be my follow up, I guess, as opposed to just kind of, I don't know, not going to Pork Fest, not or nor moving. There are some people who have moved to New Hampshire who have never been to Pork Fest. There are some people who have moved to New Hampshire as part of the Free State Project who have gone to one pork fest and then for whatever reason haven't gone back. And of course, there's always the people who, for financial reasons, haven't been able to make it for you know a second or a third pork fest 
just because they live across country and I taking to... all of your vacation time to drive four days to New Hampshire, spend a week in New Hampshire, and then drive four days back across country. You know, there are other things that people want to do. Right. And I seem to recall meeting somebody last year who said that they were convinced that they were moving to New Hampshire because Porkfest was so awesome. Yeah, and there are some people that will show up to Porkfest and then just wind up not driving or flying back to wherever it is that they came from, and they just stay in New Hampshire. We'll have Nathan, to find an exact percentage. I'm not sure if there was more that you wanted to talk about about Porkfest, but I'm putting you on hold. We'll bring you back next segment. This is Free Talk Live. There's a lot of confusing information out there about Bitcoin mining. Customers have been burned by companies taking their money on pre-orders for Bitcoin mining equipment, only to receive their equipment late and miss out on opportunities to mine Bitcoins. But that doesn't mean Bitcoin mining is impossible. You just have to find an honest company to do business with. If you want to mine Bitcoins and you want to do it now, no pre-orders, no waiting. Look into the Ant Miner products from Bitmain. Their competitively priced Ant Miners are in stock and ship from the U.S. as soon as you pay. You could buy an Ant Miner today and be mining Bitcoins tomorrow. The Ant Miner line offers the best mining power per dollar currently available. 20% of the mining power in the Bitcoin network is contributed by Ant Miners. Not only that, but Bitmain is committed to support. You can get tech support and warranty service over the phone by calling 844 Bitmain. For commercial accounts, they'll even travel to your data center to install your equipment. Get all the details at bitmaintech.com. That's bitmaintech.com. From hackers and identity thieves to government spies, your online privacy has never been more at risk. Go to unseennow.com and learn how their unparalleled encryption tools can keep your communications totally secure. Unseennow.com offers email, chat, voice and video calling, and cloud storage all for free. It's never been more important to lock down your digital life, and now you can. Stop Big Brother in his tracks. Learn how at unseennow.com. Good people need help. The Homeowners Association said we had weeds and fined us $25. We told them they had the wrong house. They said if we didn't pay it, they'd file a lien. Our attorney demanded photographs, witnesses, and told them if they couldn't provide this, they must cease and desist. Issue solved. Worry less and live more with LSProtection.com. That's LSProtection.com or call 855-340-SAVE. That's 855-340-7283. Results will vary from case to case. The warning signs. First, he made me feel special. He promised he'd look after me, provide for my future. He broke every promise he made. Millions of Americans afflicted. I was ready to leave, but he told me he'd change. So I gave him another chance. I was such a fool. The consequences. Things only got worse. He started making my decisions for me, about my job, my kid's education, my money my safety, my future. He took away my choices, but I kept going back to the same politicians. The diagnosis, battered voter syndrome. I fell for the same old lies. They were just playing with my emotions, telling me what I wanted to hear. That's not right. Stop the insanity of voting for the same old abusers. Declare your independence from the two-party system and join the New Hampshire Liberty Party today at nhliberty.info. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. If you want to move to the free state and you're looking for some real estate, well, I know a guy who's really great. It's the realtor Mark Warden. Do you want a home with 20 acres, a lakeside cabin, any takers for renters, buyers and sellers too? Mark Warden is the guy for you. PorcupineRealEstate.com if you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. Free 
Talk Live. You can call in, talk about whatever is on your mind. 855-450-FREE. That's the Pro XPN toll-free call-in line. 855-450-3733. Or you can Skype in to the show if you have the Skype option. Username lrn.fm. Although we have a call on Skype right now, so if you try calling in right now, we will not answer because then we would have two people on at one time and that just gets kind of messy. So wait until the Skype line clears or just call, let it ring, and then I'll answer when I get the chance to do so when it clears. And we'll get back to Nathan in just a second. But first, I want to make sure that I tell you about BuzzBox at coffee.freetalklive.com. You can get a free pound of the best of the best coffee, BuzzBox. It's shade-grown, 100% organic, and top 1% grade Arabica. Coffee is a very absorbent crop, and this makes the organic certification that much more important. BuzzBox is competitively priced with other high-end coffees, but they do something that other coffee producers seem to care nothing for. They have set up a program that allows people around the world to buy into their co-op. Free Talk Live is attempting to recruit 1,000 listeners just like you to order their coffee from coffee.freetalklive.com, thus allowing us to finance 100 microloans through World Vision. Help us change lives by offering people in poverty an opportunity to change their own lives. Get started now by getting your free pound of coffee at coffee.freetalklive.com. You still have to pay for shipping, but you can cancel your subscription at any time. You even get to tell them how often you want the pound or two pounds of coffee, whatever amount it is. So if you want a pound every week you can get a pound every week you want a pound twice a week you can get a pound twice a week once a month you set that up yourself but again you can cancel at any time get that free pound of coffee coffee.freetalklive.com but remember you do have to pay for the shipping of that first pound of coffee back to the skype and nathan Nathan, I'm not sure if there was more that you wanted to talk about about Porkfest. That's the Porcupine Freedom Festival that happens next week at Rogers Campground in Lancaster, New Hampshire. I will be there all week. I have a radio show that I do on Sunday afternoons from 3 to 5. That's Peace, Love, Liberty Radio. You can listen on the Liberty Radio Network to that show. So as soon as I get my show done on Sunday, I'll get my archives posted, plan to be on the road by about 5.30, and I'm actually driving to Manchester to pick up a friend from the airport and then heading up to the White Mountains of New Hampshire. So, Nathan, well, did you have a, another question or more questions about the Pork Fest? You had asked... If either of us knew what percentage of people that attend a pork fest wind up moving to New Hampshire, and I don't know, I don't think anybody has ever tried to conduct such a uh, survey or an exit poll. Let let, let me re ask or re answer the question. I know that when you register for pork fest, the organizers do ask the question of, are you a signer of the free state project statement of intent and have you moved and they ask that primarily so that they know whether to put little stickers on your name tag indicating that you're a signer or a mover but i don't know if they have tabulated that in any other kind of manner i also don't know if they've gone back through previous years to see how many people go to pork fest before moving how many Free State Project movers have attended a pork fest? How many of the signers of the statement of, of intent have attended a pork fest? And knowing that there's over 15,000 signers and roughly 1,500 people that attended last year's pork fest, 
know, that leaves it's a large gap of number of people that have signed that attend a pork fest. And that's true. And uh, I guess uh, you do want, I guess what I'd be more interested in there is polling people who've already moved and asking how many of them attended pork fest before moving and if that was a factor. Um, well, I know I actually, that Ian and Mark wound up moving to New Hampshire without having ever visited New Hampshire, and their first pork fest was about nine months after they arrived in New Hampshire. Yeah, I'm kind of uh, I'm kind of jealous of Ellen a little bit there because uh, for, as soon as you, we were like in Michigan or something, and as soon as you found out yep. about the Free State Project, you knew you wanted to go. <laughs> and for me, it's a little more complicated and might not happen as quickly. Um, but right. I, I wanted I wanted to weigh in on that state state list thing you were talking about. The, Certainly. Uh, what, what was the name of the list? Uh, the name of the list is Eleven Things Statist Taught Me About Being a Libertarian. But because I'm not really a fan of the term statist, I have changed it to Eleven Things That Those Who Love the State Have Taught Me About Being a Libertarian. Yeah, statist is more the pejorative when you want to be mean or uh, hurt someone's fragile feelings, uh, I would guess. Uh, but the uh, the fact that the guys talk or the, the author is talking about it in the context of argument made me think of a book by George Smith about atheism, and he mentioned something in that book about people arguing, which I still remember and uh, I think of in this context, which is that people who have more in common have more to argue about. Right, that's true, because the the subtle differences between their opinions are in the end going to just tear them apart, because they're like, you believe in the same thing that I do in these areas, so you must be reasonable, because I am, clearly, so if you have these disagreements with me, then there's something wrong here in your logic, and I, I have to you know, fi figure this out. Yeah, and, yeah, and I, I've noticed that if you put libertarians in a room, and I use the term libertarian to describe everybody in the libertarian quadrant, and that would include voluntarist, anarchist, agorist, and other people who want you know minimal or no government. And when I say minimal, I mean where the maximum role of government, if there is to be one, is the protection of life, liberty, and property. So at most, government should have police, fire, and courts. At most. Yeah, so when, when you get those people in a room, and I would say that everybody in that quadrant, it, they agree on at least 90% of things. And those people are then just going to nitpick one another about the 10% <laughs> or less of what they disagree on. Right. But right, the, exam the example in the book was of two two Baptists arguing, or like two uh, Christians in the same church arguing over a type of baptism. And George Smith said, well, I thought I was the atheist, so they would just tear me apart. And then I realized later it's actually the opposite, that, you know, this, that because they have so much in common, that's, that's why they're right. arguing so much. Well, I like where and you're going with this point, though. Like, if if people are completely opposite on an issue and they know that they don't agree on anything— they're, they're probably going to avoid that argument because there's really nothing for them to gain out of it because uh, you're you, both like stubbornly you, stuck in your viewpoint and no amount of logic or reasoning is going to change that. You took the words right out of my mouth. That's where I was going with this <laughs> because there's just not that many people who want who even want to argue for the state. Like I, I'm actually glad online if I find someone like that, like that objectivist guy, uh, Bidnato, who did that for a while, people who actually want to argue for the state because the actual people who run the state know that they don't have to argue for it. They people go to school and get indoctrinated into it. So they don't actually have to argue or or give logical reasons for right. it. Right. They can just wave off your opinion like Psh, who do they think they are? They don't know what they're talking about. And the, and the ones that do want to argue that there's not a lot of common ground because of what you said. Like, if you want to control me and I don't want to be controlled, like, where's the common ground? Like, it's, it's hard to really reach a compromise there. Right. And I, I would say that when you're arguing that nothing good ever comes out of that, even if it's somebody that you agree with on 99.999% of the issues – if you are arguing, there's nothing good that will come out of that. Right. That's if why you have to have a rational a discussion, discussion. Then something good could come out of it. 
or if you're having a debate. And a lot of people, especially liberty-minded people, they confuse debate with arguing. Debate is very well thought out and very well reasoned. Arguing is all emotions. You can call in about that or anything else in hour number three, which is coming up next, 855-450 free. This is Free Talk Live. Gold Bond presents Shaquille O'Neal. So I'm hanging out with my Gold Bond buddies, and they're like, Shaq, Shaq, great job with the Gold Bond powder spray. People love it. So I'm soaking in the good vibes, kicking off my shoes. Next thing I know, they're coming out with a new foot powder spray. Boom. Shaq strikes again. Gold Bond No Mess Powder Spray cools and refreshes your body, and new Gold Bond Foot Powder Spray has two times the odor-absorbing powders to do the same for your feet. Stay cool with Gold Bond. Now is the time for new flooring in your home because Lumber Liquidators has every floor on sale with the end of quarter clearance sale on right now. Get huge savings on all flooring like quick click pre-finished hardwood for $169 a square foot, solid hand scraped horizontal bamboo for $179, and this week and only get 8mm cherry laminate for just $0.69. Cents. So go to LumberLiquidators.com to find the store nearest you. Special 24-month financing is available. But hurry, this end of quarter clearance sale ends Monday, June 30th. Are you tired of governments murdering people around the world? Stop using their money. There is an alternative. Bitcoin is a stateless, free market, non-political currency. Bitcoin cannot be inflated or controlled by any government. By using their money, you're helping the state. Stop doing it. You have an incredible alternative available now. Learn it. Use it. Spread it. Get started with Bitcoin at WeUseCoins.com. That's WeUseCoins.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. You're listening to the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty news and activist updates online at thelibertybeat.com. This is Justin Armand with your Liberty Beat for June 20th, 2014. Gold open today at $1,320, silver at $20.82, and Bitcoin is trading at $595. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from the notorious activist Michael Cargill. He has a new show called Come and Talk It, live Sunday afternoon at 4 p.m. on 1370 a.m. in Austin. That's 1370 a.m. in Austin on Sunday at 4 p.m. And support comes from My Magic Mud, an all-natural teeth whitening and strengthening remedy. Go to MyMagicMud.com or pick a jar up today at Brave New Books. And now the news. A new study published in Biomed Research International examined six studies by the Center for Disease Control that found thimerosal, an organic mercury compound found in vaccinations, to be safe. Researchers state that despite the six studies by the CDC claiming no danger, there are over 165 studies which have found thimerosal to be harmful. Sixteen studies looking at the effects of thimerosal on human infants and children found a range of outcomes, including poisoning, allergic reactions, and neurological disorders. The researchers are calling for the CDC to reevaluate its position on thimerosal and its use in vaccines. Militants launched an attack on Iraq's largest oil reserve overnight Tuesday, but failed in their attempt. Security forces were able to repel the insurgents, who have seized Iraqi military equipment provided to them through contracts with the U.S. government. With air support backup, Iraqi troops were able to destroy an ISIS convoy and gunned down three snipers who were trying to break into the Baji refinery. The Iraqi chief military spokesman said 40 attackers were killed in the fighting. The United States no longer ranks in the top 100 most peaceful nations. According to the annual Global Peace Index, it stands at 101 out of 162 nations. 
The annual assessment measures data driven from crime statistics, political forces, refugee activity, population trends, and other factors including terrorism and economic conditions. Ireland is number one on the list, with Denmark and Austria close behind. The three least peaceful nations are South Sudan, Afghanistan, and Syria. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from Cabo Bob's, now with two locations in Austin at 500 East Ben White Boulevard and 2828 Rio Grande Boulevard. And from Roberts & Roberts Brokerage Incorporated, specializing in precious metals since 1977. They don't feed the banks by taking credit cards, but you can bet they take Bitcoin. Online at rrbi.co or by phone at 800-874-9760. You're listening to The Liberty Beat for June 20th, 2014. Be sure to check out the website at thelibertybeat.com. According to The Independent, scientists at a British university claim to have made a breakthrough in treating antibiotic-resistant bacteria. Antibiotic-resistant bacteria, or superbugs, are considered one of the world's most deadly threats ranked alongside global terrorism. Researchers believe they have discovered a way in which drugs could attack the cell membrane of one of the three bacteria groups known as gram-negatives. The membrane acts as a defensive barrier against attacks by the human immune system and antibiotic drugs. Until now, the formulation of the membrane had not been well understood. Scientists say if drugs can be developed to target those molecules, then membranes could not form, leaving the bacteria exposed to the body's immune system. Governor Rick Perry has ordered the Department of Public Safety to immediately begin a surge of law enforcement operations along the border to combat the flood of illegal immigration into the state. The state authorized DPS to fund the extra security efforts, which cost approximately $1.3 million per week. Perry said the order was needed due to the lack of adequate federal resources required to secure the border. He added that Texas cannot afford to wait for Washington to act, and affirmed that the state would not sit by idly while the safety and security of Texans are in jeopardy. A report by Russia Today says another operation, Desert Storm, could be on its way following the recent deployment of nearly 300 U.S. troops to Iraq. Manned and unmanned surveillance flights are also patrolling the region, keeping an eye on advancements being made by the ISIS jihadist group that threatens to overrun the country. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from Accountable Authority, now offering a public database of police abuse and misconduct. Take action and join for free to gain community support and protection online at accountableauthority.com. This is Justin Armand reporting with the Liberty Beat. Remember, freeing your mind is freeing our world. Allison Fry and Peter Hartman are a long-term couple. They've been trying out an open relationship that frees them to emotionally burden and exhaust other people. We're both grown-ups. We both trust each other. It just seemed like the right time to open ourselves up to meeting other people and barraging them with our crippling emotional neediness. Yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong. I still want to vent to Allison about all the anxieties I have at the office until she wishes I would just shut the f*** up. But sometimes you just get the urge to sap the life out of a different woman for a change. The flexible arrangement has allowed Fry and Hardman to participate in a variety of tiresome and psychologically draining one-off encounters with partners ranging from close acquaintances to total strangers. Of course there was a time when I couldn't imagine saddling anyone but Peter with my extensive emotional baggage and trust issues, but now that we've tried it... <laughs> the best part is, when we're back together, all we really want to do is drain the living shit out of each other. This is the Onion News Network. Kicking off our number three, this is Free Talk Live, and you can call in, take control of the airwaves, 855-450-FREE, that's 855-450-3733, that is the Pro XPN toll-free call-in line, or if you have Skype, and I think Skype generally sounds better just because the way the voice is transferred, then you can Skype in to the show. The username is lrn.fm. And, of course, you do need to send a contact request first on Skype. That way you can send a typed message letting us know what it is that you want to discuss, but we will take those calls and again, it sounds a lot better. So even if you don't have, you know, 
a computer from whence to call with Skype. If you have a smartphone, you can download the Skype app. And then just because it's sending over the data connection instead of through the cell phone connection sort of thing, there's something about it that makes it sound better, even if you use Skype off of your cell phone. In studio tonight, it's Daryl. And Ellen. And we've been going through a list of 11 things that people who love the state have taught us about being libertarian. We're on number four, or rather we were about to get to number four on the list. But Ellen, just real quick, run through items number one, two, and three on the list for anyone who did not catch those. All right, so for number one... Uh, if you own a gun, you have a Napoleon complex and you just own one because you need to compensate for something. Okay. Especially if you're a woman, because there's such a thing as penis envy, I guess, and guns are what that's for. Number two is uh, about being wrong and, you know, I can just not be convinced by any amount of reason or logic. I am wrong. I will always be wrong and no amount of logic, reasoning, or research will ever change that. There's also a chance that we're illiterate and we should just go ahead and give up. (laughs) Number three was I believe in private rather than government run charity. I hate poor people and would rather see people die than risk being nice to them. I also hate sick people because of Obamacare, old people, social security and children. Just because they're children. Right. And this is like assuming that Obamacare represents sick people and social security actually helps old people. Right. Right. No, because of the whole reasoning and logic thing, we fail to see how great and wonderful the Patient Protection Affordable Care Act is Right. for all of these sick how, old people. How affordable it is. Oh, somebody else will pay for my health care. Oh, I'm somebody else. Oops. Guess that and backfired. One, one thing that I thought was odd is before this wound up becoming law, President Obama was saying, well, the increase to the health care premium is going to be no more than the amount of your cell phone or your cable bill. Well, I don't know about anybody else, but I only pay $35 a month for cell phone. I was paying $25 a month until I bought a new phone and the plan that I had been grandfathered into wound up getting bumped up $10 a month because you can't transfer a grandfathered plan to a new phone with the provider that I have. Right. So, you know, $35 a month. Who pays $35 a month for health insurance? Nobody. No, I haven't even gotten into that yet. Like, I don't want to get caught up in the whole insurance scheme. It's just frightening to me. Yeah. But- insurance is, I, I would say it's a big scam. I Honestly, I think so because I don't go to the hospital often enough to get the full usage out of it. I mean, maybe if there's a disaster that were to happen to me, I'd want it. But, like, there's no way to predict that. So I could just be, like, uselessly spending my money. Right. And that's how they make so much. But um, besides that, I guess we can move on to Yeah, let's go to number four on the list. I'm so racist that I don't even notice it anymore. Everything I say is somehow racist, and my belief in equal rights for everyone is secretly part of my racist agenda. Does that sound like me? It does. And the fact that I have repeatedly said that we're all part of one human family, that too is somehow racist. I don't know how. Racist because you're saying that you're saying that discrimination exists in minority groups. Like clearly you're a stereotyper. It it shouldn't exist. Like everybody should be treated equally under the law. But you're saying it exists. So you're racist. I'm admitting that a certain thing exists. There are some cars that are red and some cars that are blue. Does that mean that somehow I am anti-green car? No, that's just me stating a fact that some cars are red and some cars are blue. Right, and maybe some people prefer blue cars over red cars. Yeah. You never and know. Go- going back to the you know human family thing, if I cut my arm and you cut your arm and anybody else in the world cuts their arm and all of our blood pours into the same little pool, you won't be able to look at that and then differentiate and determine whose blood is what. Uh, Have you ever heard of genetic sequencing? 
I, I'm pretty sure they could do blood tests to, to no, figure I'm out whose blood is No, I'm not saying do a who's. test. I'm saying look at it with your naked eye. This is quite morbid. I don't know why you're using this example. <laughs> because we're all the same. We're all made out of the same right, well, matter. We're all the same species, Homo sapiens. So we all yeah. like ha- are clearly like genetically similar. I don't yes. see, like, and I don't see any specific group like just one group whether it be like latino african european scandinavian russian like chinese whatever like there's not one specific group that is just like so much more inclined to like intelligence or violence or you know like paper bag making you just don't know like you can't discriminate because like every right. single person is unique and uh it like we all have the same opportunity to become like as intelligent as we possibly could. So it's it's not like you can tell what race a person is just by like sending Visually them Visually looking at their blood. I'm not saying put it under a microscope. I'm just saying like if you or were do DNA sequence, if you just look at a drop of blood, you're not going to be able to tell where it came from. Okay, well, I mean my my example is more like if you're uh, talking with someone on the internet and you can't see them face to face. Right. Like generally, like, you can't tell what race they are if they're responding to you in the same language that you are. Right. So I just like, I don't see how that's racist, but I, I guess like some people just have to have that claim that like they need something to hate. Right. You know, everybody needs a direction for their hate. So number five on the list. Instead of religion, I worship Ron Paul. I can I can't think for myself and answer questions only in Ron Paul quotes. This makes ordering at restaurants really awkward. Yeah, I've been to a restaurant with you before and it was really really strange hearing you give your order in Ron Paul quotes because the waitress had no clue what you were trying to It's find. happening. Okay. <laughs> Would you like fries or anything? <laughs> no, I We should bring home all the troops. Okay, I think, so is that a yes or a no on the fries? <laughs> I think that this in this sentence, like specifically for the people that live in Keene that are involved in like uh, act- activism around here, you could replace Ron Paul with Ian Freeman because that's supposedly what people believe is that Ian is the cult leader and yes, and we're, we all follow his orders because we have no ability to think or plan on our own. Yeah, Ron Paul could also be replaced by Stefan Molyneux. Oh, because that, that, that one there's too. the claim yeah. that you know some people worship Stefan Molyneux that he's a cult leader. Well, he's quite a celebritarian, so like I could see how that claim could be made. And one thing that I really don't like, and not just Ron Paul quotes, but when people just quote other people of, well, Lysander Spooner wrote, or Thoreau said, okay, yeah, I, I understand that, you know, somebody said something slightly more eloquently than what you're trying to say, but just because you can quote other people doesn't mean that you understand the philosophy. It just means that you remember some quotes right but i think more importantly just because you're quoting somebody doesn't mean that you're completely subscribing to everything that they say just the one specific quote right and we have more on this list and we will finish the list when we come back and of course you can call in talk about anything 855 450 free this is free talk live this is the Central Scrutinizer. I steal your labor by force through taxation. My job is to spy on you and keep you from hearing things like the Freedom Fiends. I especially do not want you to torrent Freedom Fiends episodes to keep them drone-proof. Do not go to freedomfiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Do not go to freedomfiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Do not go to freedomfiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at FreeRoss.org. That's FreeRoss.org. 
Gold. It's like nothing else on Earth. From the Romans through the Renaissance, from the Industrial Age to the Space Age, gold has weathered the test of time. For 6,000 years, gold has remained the ultimate store of wealth. According to the World Gold Council and the U.S. Mint, demand is at an all-time high. The stage is being set for the re-emergence of gold as the common-sense alternative to a fiat paper currency that gets weaker every day. Midas Resources is proud to offer the hard-hitting report that arms you with the truth you need to protect you and your family from the Fed's plans for your hard-earned money. Don't gamble with your future. Call Midas Resources today and ask for your free copy of As Good As Gold. Call 1-800-686-223. For the report the Fed hopes you'll never see. As good as gold can be yours by calling 800 686 2237. If you have ever thought about owning gold, you must read this report. Call Midas today at 800 686 2237. This alert just came in. This special announcement is for business owners and leaders of organizations who've been waiting for the right time to build. General Steel has made it impossible to wait any longer with rock bottom prices that could save you thousands. That's right, General Steel, America's leader in pre-engineered structures, is offering buildings at prices you will never see again. Don't miss these prices, a 50 by 100 for under $30,000. You heard right, that's 5,000 square feet under $30,000. Many Manufacturers, if you need a larger building, try a 100 by 100 commercial building for 129000 You can't afford to rent with these prices. Imagine a 70 by 100 foot church building for under $69,000. With the economy improving and interest rates still at historic lows, you can't afford to wait. Call 800-917-8251. 800-917-8251. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. Liberty activists around the country are starting to realize politics alone won't set us free. So what will? At Liberty on the Rocks, we believe the answer starts with living your principles, spreading ideas, and connecting with those around you. By starting a Liberty on the Rocks network, you can make a difference by uniting libertarian thinkers. Find out how much fun it is to build your local network from the ground up. Visit libertyontherocks.org today to get started. You can watch the LRN Studio Cam and chat with other listeners anytime at cam.lrn.fm. That's cam.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You can call in, talk about whatever is on your mind. 855 450 free. That's the Pro XPN toll free call in line 855 450 3733 in studio tonight. You may have noticed I don't sound like Mark or Ian. That's because they are on their way back from New York City in studio tonight. It's Daryl and Ellen. And we'll get back to the story here in just a moment. But first, I want to make sure that I tell you about the Mortgage Minute Guy. Dodd Frank, Fannie Mae, and Freddie Mac are killing the mortgage industry, but the Mortgage Minute guy, Roger Schlesinger, has found some ways around these rules and organizations. Private loan sellers are competing directly against the U.S. government, and things look good. Stated income loans are back. They were these were truly less trouble than traditional mortgages. So you state your income truthfully, obviously, and they get you a loan. Rates are great, and it has never been easier to get a loan. If you need to refinance or get cash out, call the Mortgage Minute guy at 1-866-288-0088 or go to mortgageminuteguy.com. 
That's 1-866-288-0088 or MortgageMinuteGuy.com. So, Ellen, what yeah. is next on the list of things that those who love the state have taught us about being libertarians? Well, for starters, my belief in personal property and keeping the wages I earn is inherently greedy. My greed makes it difficult for me to pay my fair share, which is my duty as an American. I know that if I don't pay taxes, I'll go to jail, but they still tell me it's voluntary. Statists have assured me, however, that if I don't like it, there's always the option to move to Somalia. I hear the weather there is great this time of year. And the major problem with the whole move to Somalia argument is that Somalia has more government than we do, but people don't realize that. The UN has been in Somalia for over 20 years in peacekeeping missions. We don't right. have the UN here doing peacekeeping. No, but I mean Somalia is just a it's a nation somewhere else that like we don't really know about or have to pay attention to. It's far away and you know that that works. That well, sounds good to most people. A, a lot of people mention Somalia because there's been a state of civil war for nearly 20 years. So when they hear Somalia, they think, oh, well, there's no government in Somalia. If you don't like government, go where there's no government. Right, because uh, a better argument total would anarchy be, there. A, a better argument would be move to Antarctica because there is no we, one to control we've got you, you there. libertarians. Antarctica has no government and no roads. Checkmate. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the roads. I mean, there would have to be some at some point if there's like people moving there. I, unless they just fly in from helicopter, which I guess is pretty expensive. Penguins also, don't need roads. No, I mean, but they're penguins. And if libertarians are going to be moving there, are they just going to like huddle with the penguins? Are they going to adopt the penguin lifestyle? I don't think so. I don't think you would want to see like some grown woman vomiting freshly eaten fish down a baby's throat. That's just, like That doesn't sound yeah, appealing to anyone. Yeah, that would just be anyone. kind of weird. But the reason that people don't live in Antarctica, other than like the people staying at the science base, is because of a UN treaty that prohibits colonization of Antarctica. Well, Meaning, if you try to live in Antarctica, you are violating international law, and then you will wind up being prosecuted by the UN. Right, because then you'd have to have some sort of, like, nationality for Antarctica. And since, like, all of the countries that have already discovered it and, like, have bases there, they'd have to start fighting over that. And nobody really wants Antarctica. It's not, like, prime real estate there. Well, it's not that nobody wants it. It's that legally, under international treaty, nobody can have it. Right, but, I mean, I'm just saying, like, at any point in time, somebody could you know, fight against this treaty, but nobody is. And like, there's a clear reason for that. But I wanted to go back to this point that like keeping the wages I earn is inherently greedy. And that is my duty to, to pay for everybody else's uh, problems. And yes, like, of course it's greedy. Like it, it's my money. And I, uh, you know, I spent my time earning this. So why do I owe it to other people exactly? That that's not greedy, but if it is greedy, you're just a as bad Gordon person Gecko for not. Said greed is good. I just I don't understand the argument. Like you're not a good person if you're not paying for someone else's health care. Yeah, and we'll get back to the list momentarily. But since this is a caller-driven show, it's about you, your thoughts. We have Robert in Marlboro, New Hampshire, wants to. Talk about libertarian arrogance. Robert, yeah. you're on Free Talk Live. What's on your mind? Libertarian arrogance. Yeah. You're, you're yeah, on I the air, so all the time. Go, go ahead and talk about it. Well, I hear this ad all the time, and they keep saying this thing where they say, uh, yeah, I, the reason I moved to, to New Hampshire is because I wanted to be around other people like me who get it. Don't you think that sounds a little arrogant? Uh, well, I'm not the person that made that statement in the ad. I, kn I know the ad that you're talking about. It's an ad for the Shire Society. And Isn't that the person that's sitting next to you? No, it wasn't. It was oh, Cecilia. His voice sounds the same. It, it was Cecilia who used to be on the Ladies and Keen podcast. 
Oh, I'm sorry. I, I apologize. The voice sounds like the woman that you're talking to. No, no. Uh, Ellen is in studio tonight. And... Yeah, I used to be on Ladies and Keen with Cecilia, but um, I am not Cecilia, nor did I make that comment. <laughs> Okay, I just think that that's an incredibly arrogant thing for someone to say. Right. Well, I think it's easy what, what for people to become that? self or self righteous when it, when it comes to being a libertarian because it's such a select group of people, and um, usually when you start conversations with libertarians, it gets very like intellectual, in depth, like it's actual discussion and not just argument. So it, I think it's uh you know it's it's a slippery slope for people who you know think like. Oh, I I understand so much, and like, so so does everyone else around me. They just get it. Like, yes, it, it may be arrogant, but it also may be true in some cases. I I wouldn't claim all the time. But. I just think it sounds really arrogant. You know, I want to be like a, around other people like me who get it, because obviously I get it, right? Yeah, I, I agree that it does sound kind of arrogant, but again, it wasn't me, nor was it Ellen who made that statement, but I, I can see how that does come across as arrogant and self-righteous. Right, and it's probably also, you know, saying that you want to be around other people like you. Like, like that has Most been... Most people do, though. Right, but that it can be used in, like, multiple contexts, and uh, I can't imagine most of them are, you know, beneficial. Like, right. Like, know, everybody wants to be around people who are like them, like, Republicans like Republicans and, and Democrats like Democrats. Right. There, there are very few people, if any, who would say, I want to be around people that absolutely hate me for everything that I stand for, because I think that that would just be a wonderful place to live. I want to go to where nobody likes me and I stick out like a sore thumb. You can call in, talk about libertarian arrogance or anything else, 855-450-FREE. If you owe the IRS back taxes, listen carefully. Sweeping changes to IRS policies will help more people than ever eliminate their tax debts once and for all. And now I can help you reduce or eliminate your tax debts and end your tax nightmare. Hi, I'm Dan Pilla. I've helped thousands of people reduce and eliminate tax debts they couldn't pay. And after more than 30 years of experience dealing with the IRS, I can tell you there's no such thing as a hopeless tax case. And with the IRS's new policies, it's easier than ever to put your tax debt behind you once and for all. Call now at 800-346-6829 to learn how I can help you. You know your IRS debt will not go away by itself, but you don't have to live in fear anymore. Call 800-346-6829. Learn how I can help you eliminate wage and bank levies, release tax liens, and negotiate a settlement with the IRS that will put your tax nightmare behind you forever. Call 800-34-NO-TAX or go to TaxHelpOnline.com. That's TaxHelpOnline.com. Free Press Publications is an independent alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. FPP brings you daily news and commentary at fpp.cc as well as weekly news in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at fppradio.com. The monthly newspaper FPP News at news.fpp.cc and books at shop.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at fpp.cc. That's fpp.cc, as in Creative Commons. Are you looking for camping, hunting, survival, or shooting gear? ManVentureOutpost.com carries the name brands you want at the lowest prices. Ammunition, knives, firearm accessories, archery, air guns, scopes, binoculars, laser sights, tactical flashlights, fish finders, and boating equipment. ManVentureOutpost.com is family owned and has the lowest prices. Go check it for yourself. Get it quick. Get it from ManVentureOutpost.com. Now buy firearms at ManVentureOutpost.com. 
Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's posts pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click Get Notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on doing the Free State Project and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. Find out about giving to our Google AdWords campaign at amp.freetalklive.com. That's amp. Dot freetalklive.com You're listening to the best liberty-oriented audio streamed around the clock, on the air, and online. This is the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live, and you can call in about whatever is on your mind. 855 450 free. That is the Pro XPN toll free call in line. 855 450 3733. We'll get back to the list that we're slowly getting through of 11 things that those who love the state have taught us about being libertarians. But first, I want to make sure that I tell you about the North American Bitcoin Conference. The North American Bitcoin Conference will be taking place July 19th and 20th in Chicago at the McCormick Place South Building. It's actually going to be the first Bitcoin conference in the Midwest. So that is very exciting. Among the speakers, Kathy Reisenweitz from Young Voices, Tony Gallippi from BitPay, Roger Veer, who is known as Bitcoin Jesus, Charlie Lee from Litecoin, Jeff Berwick, the Dollar Vigilante, Peter Smith of Blockchain.info, Jeffrey Tucker from Liberty.me, and many, many more. You can go to BTCChicago.com to get your tickets. And yes, they do take Bitcoin. That's btcchicago.com, and Ian and Mark will both be there, and I believe that they will be broadcasting live from the North American Bitcoin Conference, so if you have the chance to make it to Chicago July 19th and 20th for the North American Bitcoin Conference, I would recommend that you go btcchicago.com. Ellen, what is next on the list of things that those who love the state have taught us about being libertarian. Uh, This one's pretty important. Every firearm I own, regardless of make, model, or caliber, is in fact a fully automatic military-grade AR-15 assault rifle that shoots 1,000 rounds a minute and is used solely for hunting children. This also makes me a terrorist, a terrorist that especially hates children. Yeah, and I still don't know why there's the belief that libertarians don't like children, Unless it has something to do with, you know, all of the things that people who love the state claim or that they want to do. It's for the children. I think it's because libertarians want to uh, strive to have a society where it's not nearly as regulated. And if there's no regulations, then how are we to ensure that our children are going to have a successful future or one in which they're not shot by an AR-15 while they're walking down the road? Because that's just going to happen in an anarchist society is that everybody's going to own uh, semi-automatic guns and, you know, fire them at will. 
Yeah. Well, one thing that certainly would not happen in a free society is the DEA shooting your children or your dogs or throwing flashbangs into your baby's crib. And then you know what? If later everybody... releasing a report of, oops, we didn't find any drugs in the house. Sorry that your baby got third degree burns. Right, which is terrible. And that makes me really sad that you bring that up. But I think that if everybody owned a firearm, think of how many fewer like house robberies there would be. Yeah, there would be a lot fewer house robberies. Let's go to number eight on the list real quick. My belief that money should be hacked should be backed by actual things of value such as gold or silver is insanity and proves my complete lack of knowledge in economics. I mean, clearly this was proven back in the 70s when they took money off of the gold standard. Yeah, because we need a fluid money supply that can just be arbitrarily increased or decreased. And you and your gold and silver... You you are keeping us from just, you know, raising and lowering the money supply at whim. Right. Like the value keeps a constant or the gold keeps a constant value. Like that's no good if, if you want to regulate it. So yeah. for for the next one, I'm I'm trying to rush through these because I know you wanted to get through them. Uh my distrust of the government, though based on historical and current events, is proof that I am a psychotic and should be seeking professional help. Because I, I guess having distrust of the govern, government makes you uh, paranoid and schizophrenic. Yeah, and I actually worked for a hospital for a while as hospital security. And whenever somebody came in for a psych evaluation, it was part of my job to stand outside of either the little ER room with just the curtain in case anything happened or every now and then they would actually have a room with a door, but it was my job to stand there in case something happened. And one of the questions that they asked people was whether or not they, you know, not necessarily do you trust the government, but it was a question that basically would tell them whether you trusted the government or not. And if people answered it a certain way, then they would, yep, you've got problems. You need further evaluation You're staying with us for the next 72 hours. We'll get back to the list in just a moment, but we do have a call coming in from Arizona. James, you are on Free Talk Live with Daryl and Ellen. Respectfully, Daryl, I have to agree with Robert. And just as respectfully, Ellen, if I called myself King James as opposed to Objectivist James, I I would think that would be a a moniker of utter hubris. But... uh, and I've been libertarian all my life. Registered one. I, I remember when Ron Paul ran for presidency in 1988. Ellen, I don't suppose you were even alive, were you? No, I was not. And uh, that's quite impressive. Congratulations to you. Just as I'm familiar with a, uh, uh, John Watts, more more guns, less crime. But I would say that I think more uh, house robberies would be less successful if there were more guns in society. But I don't own a gun. And uh, the only time my house got robbed was when I didn't have dogs. But, uh, again, I do believe that the list you're reading is written by a progressive. And the funny thing is I find so many of my modern-day libertarians share so many sentiments with progressives. They like to smear their opponents. They like to make fun of their opponents. And they don't engage in logic or reason with people they don't agree with. They just attack them. And as a person, and I can speak from experience on your show, and your dear leader, if you ask me, not Daryl, the one that has all these top three keen people on a, and they got got their all their penny in the wad. I'm sure he gets great delight out of that site because I've only gone on it twice, and it's quite stunning what what the, your free keeners have done to that town, and have like obviously stirred up a lot of locals that were there a long time before you. And this is why people find you arrogant. And this is why I believe the libertarian movement is only going to get one out of every 126 votes cast in the next presidential election, which means it will always be an irrelevant movement, unfortunately. And and by the way, Daryl, Lois Lerner, what she did was an incompetent, your opening show bit about the... So to to make the claim that I lost two years worth of emails 
because a computer crashed when emails get stored on a server. You're saying that that's not an incompetent statement? No, that was deliberate. And she also, you left out the part, uh, Ellen, about her invoking her Fifth Amendment right in Congress, and she's a government employee. She has no such right, and she's already been giving testimony about been under questions. And uh, this is a disturbing thing because you also write it off as no big deal, Daryl, because they're just a bunch of Tea Party goofs anyway, and you say Republicans and Democrats, and they're all the same. No, they're not. The Republicans uh, and the Democrats are the same because they work together to increase the size of the government and take away our freedoms. I I get that theory. I I, I follow you on the theory. That's your statement. It's not a theory, James. It's a fact. Yes, it is. No, it's not. Republicans, Barack Obama and John McCain couldn't be more polar opposite in so many different ways it's not even funny just like i'm not democrat i don't have a democrat bone in my body i vote republican now because i know i left the libertarian party after the atrocity 2001 because of people like you saying we had it coming we are the victim the victim deserved it and we're over in the Middle East, and that's why they came over here to attack us, just to attack it, us It's back. called that blowback, kind of James. Thank you for the call. Your call's welcome, 855 450 education be separated from the state? Today, people go to college, do coursework, repeat what professors tell them, get degrees, and are issued official transcripts from state-approved institutions. These transcripts are given to potential employers as proof of coursework. In the future, people will learn online and obtain pseudonymous academic credentials associated with their Bitcoin address. That future is now. At mathgate.info, you can learn basic reasoning skills. Instead of getting a transcript associated with your name, you can obtain cryptographic proof that the owner of your Bitcoin address learned these skills. Then, apply for jobs online using your Bitcoin address instead of your government-sanctioned name. Since mathgate.info is designed to be used anonymously, you can be sure that you will not be discriminated against or shown favoritism due to your race, gender, political or religious views, and so on. There is only one factor by which you will be judged, your ability to reason. Be at the vanguard of separating education from the state by visiting mathgate.info. Gentlemen, in search of a million dollar smile that'll make them take notice, I mean really get their attention, then get the mud. My Magic Mud. The fluoride free whitener with no chemicals, additives, GMOs, or bad taste. And safe to swallow. My Magic Mud detoxifies, reduces sensitivity, cleans and strengthens your teeth while it whitens comes as a powder for pure whitening power. Start looking good for that special someone. Get the mud now. MyMagicMud.com Listen up all you preppers and survival enthusiasts. Sigma 3 Survival School has a brand new survival instructor training program that will teach you everything you need to know about survival and then license you to teach our survival programs so you can make a substantial profit from it. If you have always wanted to learn to be completely self-reliant and would like to make money at it, then check out Sigma 3 Survival School Survival Instructor Program at survivalschool.us or call 479-561-3886 today. Are you looking for an excuse to come check out New Hampshire this fall? You're invited to Keenvention. Keenvention is your chance to meet dozens of key liberty activists from across the Shire. You can explore the beautiful little city of Keene, discuss various forms of activism with seasoned veterans, do some Robin Hooding, and learn about making the move. Keenvention received rave reviews last year. If you missed it, visit Keenvention.info for full video coverage of every speaker and panel. This year, Rich Paul is our first announced keynote speaker, and more are being announced now at Keenvention.info. Join old and new friends and neighbors in Keen for Keenvention this October 31st through November 2nd. Tickets are available now at a special early bird price of just $40 via credit card or Bitcoin. That $40 price only lasts through Porkfest, so don't delay. Reserve your tickets now at Keenvention.info. Visit Keenvention.info for more, or look for our page and event on Facebook. That's keenvention.info. 
So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet, around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. MindThings.com is a fun online game that pits you against people around the world to mine for scarce resources. Do business in a capitalist economy with virtually mined gold, tax-free. It doesn't require a big-time commitment. Your little mining robot guy works whether you're logged in or not. It costs nothing to play, but you can buy bonuses. They even accept bitcoins. Go to MindThings.com, use coupon code FTL, and double your mining speed. It's free. MindThings.com. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. Still time for your call. If you call right now, 855-450-FREE. That's the Pro XPN toll-free call-in line, and we've got someone calling in on the Skype. Corey, we will get to you momentarily. The we tonight in studio is Daryl. And Ellen. When we manage to create robots that can look and act like humans, androids, will they be our slaves, our masters, or our partners in exploration and prosperity? Quantum Vibe, the science fiction adventure webcomic, suggests the answer is all of the above. As our heroes continue their epic mission to open a vast new frontier, they encounter an android slave culture on terraformed and corporatized Mars and later join forces with a liberated android friend to avert a deadly disaster in the freewheeling asteroid belt. Quantum Vibe, Volume 2. Murphy collects these adventures in a 161 full-color page printed volume and is available from Amazon.com, BarnesandNoble.com, and BigHeadPress.com. Quantum Vibe, if you are not familiar, it's a daily web series, and it is very well done. Highly recommend, if you haven't checked that out, check it out now. Quantum Vibe at BigHeadPress.com. Corey from Savannah, Georgia. Georgia. Uh, please turn uh, down please the... Please turn down. All right, so Corey needs to turn down his listening device. He is trying to call in from the Skypes, and it appears that uh, Corey is... Corey, are you there? Okay, just got a message from Corey that he will try calling back. So, Ellen, while we wait on Corey to try calling back on the Skype, let's go through the remainder of this list of things that those who love the state have taught us about being libertarian. So, number 10 is, despite whatever social or economic class I think I belong to, I'm actually really super rich. Like, mega corporation Walmart rich. After all, only rich people can afford freedom. And, you know, that is one of the claims, is that only rich people like freedom. But if that were the truth, then why would the big giant corporations wind up giving money to both the Republican Party and the Democratic Party? I, I think the idea it, here... Why was it that Mitt Romney and Barack Obama got major donations from the members of the same large banks. Why were all of these big corporations giving money to both the Republicans and the Democrats? If, you know, the corporations are going to benefit from a libertarian society, and if the Republicans and the Democrats really are different— then why do the corporate donors wind up giving to the Republicans and the Democrats? Because when they say only rich people can afford freedom, they're not talking about the freedom to act in whatever way you want. They're talking about the freedom to do whatever you want. Like if you want to go midi putt-putt golfing, 
that's freedom, and somebody's got to pay for that. Might as well be you, right? Yeah, and I, I guess they also mean that the freedom to be left alone from the government to live on a private island somewhere. That, no, I, I can't nice. afford a private island. No, I, I can't either, but I mean, I, I can afford a, a private room. I, I have my own bedroom where I can be free in there, but like outside of that, I, I, don't, I don't think that applies. Then you're not really free. You're also not really rich. Although you are really mega corporate rich. You just don't know it because you don't know where the money is hidden. I'm rich in love. Oh, <laughs> number so, 11 on the list. This is my favorite one of all, um, probably also the most popular one. I hate roads. I also hate the police, the fire department, and any other emergency service. I'm wrong to think that any of these things could be accomplished or funded privately, even though there are good historical examples and as obvious market for these services. I guess I just want to watch the world burn. And I really do hate roads because I hate driving. I would much rather have a flying car because flying cars don't need roads. Right, and that's that's a great point, but uh, we already have the infrastructure for roads and cars, and like the only thing I hate about roads is the traffic and the signals. That's and why I hate roads. Maybe because maybe other they could be a little more chaotic. Right, <laughs> maybe they could be a little less ordered and a little more chaotic. Maybe things would go faster. Also, in regards to the police and the fire department and the emergency service, I'm pretty sure that um, any third party organization could provide something like that. Uh, yes. Like somebody in the neighborhood right now could just like buy a, an old fire truck and be like, okay, if anyone has a fire, like just give me a call and I'll show up with my p pails of water. And there are good historical examples and obvious markets for those services in Detroit, Michigan right now. There's something called the threat management center. Right. That has, in some parts of the city, replaced the police department. They're Yeah, they're also much more effective uh, because they actually take the job because they care about people and they want to protect them. And the funding goes directly to that. And it, it's not as if uh, they're uh, abiding by some arbitrary set of laws. They're really just protecting people. So let's try going back to Corey calling in on Skype. Corey, you're on Free Talk Live with Daryl and Ellen. Is that better? Yes, it is. Wonderful. Okay, so that was quite possibly the most coherent um, call that James has ever made, except for that end part where he seemed to uh, show that he has no comprehension of U.S. foreign policy for the past 100 years whatsoever, uh, as he has done multiple times in the past. But I think that the concerns of the last two callers and this article that you've been talking about yes. is uh, a symptom of some of the brutalist uh, so-called libertarians. Now, who, for the people that aren't familiar with the term brutalist libertarian or libertarian brutalist, can you give just a quick explanation of what a libertarian brutalist is? Um, there's someone that, well, I don't know that I can put it in a very nice way. Um, it's someone who is more concerned about their own liberty than growing the movement and gaining liberty for others. Um, more concerned with uh, offending people than to, than to approaching people in a strategic way and spreading the message of liberty in an intelligent way. Um you know, I, I think I understand your point. Like, this list is all very sarcastic, and um, I, I think it's just, it's it's not so much disproving the arguments that are being made, but it's just making fun of them. And I think that, that can get people's blood boiling very quickly. It, it can. Um, and the thing is, is that a lot of the a lot of the more egotistical libertarians will start with many of the arguments that you've been talking about from this list. You know, they'll start with the things that, you know, when I'm talking to another libertarian, there's one way that we talk to each other, and it's like, uh, you know, that we, these things are funny to us. But people who think as collectivists. They, they have a mindset, and when you discuss things with them, you have to take their mindset into consideration, or you are going to immediately offend them, and you are never going to reach them. That's where brutalists fail so much, in my opinion, is that they don't, they don't understand. They, you, you have to break down some of their mentality before they can even understand where you're coming from, where you're, what you're trying to say to them. 
You know, do you understand what I mean? Right. Yeah, it you makes make a very good perfect point. sense. And so, I, I always try to sort of, and I, I hate to use the term dumb it down, but I try to, instead of using the sort of terms that I would use if I were having a private discussion with Ellen about something, because I would use a different set of terms with her than I would for somebody that doesn't necessarily understand the philosophy. Right. It's all about presentation. And if you want to get through somebody's cognitive biases, you have to connect with them on a very understandable and like even ground. And uh, you can't yes. do that if you're just like assuming that they're not going to get it anyway. Cognitive biases. Exactly. They are going to disregard anything that does not confirm whatever you're saying. That's the reason one of the methods that Harry Brown always talked about was to find a topic, to wait for a topic to spontaneously come about that you agree with someone on uh, and go from there. So a war on drugs, for example, and then from the war on drugs go to other drugs that are regulated uh, and things like that. Um, so you open up conversations, you take a more gentle approach, and you can get much more mileage uh, for the energy you put into it, if you understand what I'm saying. Makes perfect sense. Corey, thank you for the call. Would love to continue the conversation, but we're out of time for tonight. You can call in earlier tomorrow. We are live from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern Time. Online in the meantime at freetalklive.com. Studies show that more and more teenagers are leaving Facebook, but where are they going instead? Apparently, to the hottest new social media site in years, the comments section of this YouTube video of a deer running in slow motion. Already, its comments section is seeing over 30 million active users. Facebook isn't giving up so easily, incorporating images and videos of deer, elk, reindeer, and even moose into their layout. But teens say that misses the point entirely. In fact, the site's one unwritten rule, don't post anything about the video itself. Teens